One of turn two on the platforms of the Gentleman Sim Racing Club for 2024. Nice to have you along for the ride wherever you're tuning in all around Australia or indeed the world across the platforms of the Gentleman Sim Racing Club, be they Facebook, Twitch or YouTube. And uh, welcome to Sprite Inside a Thursday Night Motorsport, night number three of broadcast for this week. And there's still more to come after we're done here. As you can see there on your screen, one of the great small circuits of world motorsport knock hill in scotland is uh, the setting for the opening round of straight inside a form of the v for the new season i'm zach cabin alongside me daniel Carius. uh it's a cloudy day as per usual in uh, scotland whenever we go to great britain you know the clouds aren't too far away and uh, we are ready to rock and roll here for a three race program if it ain't broke don't fix it ladies and gentlemen it'll be a 10 minute opening heat followed by a 15 minute second heat with the inverts of the top 10 on the grid and then of course a 15 minute third heat to bring us home lap times around here around that 59 second marker so we are looking at uh, quite a lengthy amount of laps on the total tonight which is good the more the better as far as formula v is concerned 74 um just bring that uh, temperature gauge back for me there please daniel sorry uh, on the right hand side there perfect uh the knock hill circuit in scotland you've got a beautiful aerial view there of it or you did have at least with nine seconds away from qualifying ceasing um currently 22 degrees the ambient nine uh, sorry 22 on track 19 the ambient partly cloudy conditions 91 percent humidity if you don't mind those details are about to update for you. We're about to tick over to 10.55 local time. Not the biggest field we've ever brought you for straight inside of Formula V, but still, we'll go quantity over uh, we'll go quality over quantity any day of the week as far as these guys are concerned because the usual protagonists are in the house and they are ready to turn it on. Glenn Cedaradell on the front row alongside Sam Chapman. Adam Lavis, Jack Humphrey, second row. Kevin Henderson, Luke Turner, third row. It's amazing, isn't it? John Merritt's not, nowhere to be seen, not in town, and therefore they have to bring in reinforcements just to keep holes <laughs> at the front end of the tree. Uh, Joe Baldwin and Tony Baker from row four, Ryan Tate, and also Dan Bartish from uh, row number five. A um, couple of new names on the grid here, which is good. Sixth row, Aiden Schultz, Phil King. Seventh row, Greg Heaney, Pete Matson. Eighth row, Brendan Neal and Chris Stark. Ninth row, Tim Watson and David Batts. From the rear of the field, it will be Kurt Nomanson. All on his lonesome on row 10. Cars coming into position. We are running the uh, circuit in clockwise direction. This is one of those rare treats in international motorsport that's bi-directional. Um, you can run the cars around the other way here. Not sure if you can do it on iRacing, but they have done it in the real world. So we are going clockwise tonight. Short, sharp, action-packed this is going to be an absolute beauty we'll get daniel career sars thoughts in just a moment revs rise cars raw race one of the new seasons straight inside a formula b let's go on a thursday night all cars seem to be getting away nicely off the line there as they head down towards the first corner no david baz no kurt nomanson on the grid here and glenn said is going to lead them from around the outside and take the lead through turn one chapman slots into second spot already under pressure from adam lavis those top three of Giving themselves a little bit of breathing space over Kevin Henderson, Tony Baker, Jack Humphreys, and Luke Turner. Oh, no, that's Lavis! Oh, Adam Lavis is gone. He's not the only one. He's taken Jack Humphreys with him. They're both gone. Synchronized spinning out of the dog leg. And it is a tricky little dog leg. There's no doubt about that. Oh, yeah. How rude of Kurt putting food ahead of Formula V. I, I, I don't understand it. I don't understand. Anyway, that's all right. Good on you, mate. Nice to have you on board. Hopefully the tucker's worth it. Because you're missing out on the fun here already. And Chapman and uh, Cito have taken off. Tony Baker's all over the back of Kevin Henderson like a cheap suit. Luke Turner and Ryan Tate there side by side. Aiden Schultz holding down seventh at the moment. The big move is on the opening lap with Baker and Schultz up four spots apiece. And now we'll ride on board with Cito here. Let's just ride with him through this dog leg. It's, it reminds me of the chase, except with a lot more um, undulation. And then those curbs, because of the banking on them and the degree on them, 
that's what can trip you up, as we saw with Adam Wavis there a few moments ago. It's a circuit of character. I mean, uh, the the degree of um, the the curving, the banking there as they go through a lot of these corners. It's not flat in any sense of the word. Round they come onto the main straight, slowest point of a circuit. Cedo trails. Sam Chapman at the moment, the end of the second lap. So Tim Watson down the back of the tree. So too Pete Matson and Dan Bartish. Um, Henderson, Humphreys and Lavis all coming undone on the opening couple of laps and down six and seven positions respectively. 58 and a half second lap time there for the race leader, Sam Chapman. It's the fastest lap of the race. We're on lap three in the early stages here. You might have noticed too, ladies and gentlemen, um, slightly earlier start times for the new season as we watch Tim Watson coming unstuck on the second lap there. Um, the reason for that, actually, I'm, I'm liking that uh, work from you, Daniel Correa The um, uh, Oh, no, that's not very good work from Brendan Nealon. The sound effects on the um, on the replay machine, very nicely done. It almost sounds like um, we're back at Augusta National last week and we're swinging golf clubs. <laughs> very nicely done from you. Um, uh, welcome to you, though. Uh, a new season at Thursday Night Motorsport. You had a warm-up last night with Banksy, of course, Wednesday Night Motorsport. Um, great to have that back on broadcast on a regular basis, but equally as good to have Formula V back in business as well. 100% Zach, yeah, we had a nice two-week break, but now we come swinging. And uh, yes, it is good to have the Wednesday nights back on the schedule. And uh, with all focus here on the Formula Vs, Knockhill Circuit, what a racetrack. If anyone out there is a BTCC fan, you'll know exactly where we exactly. are and how crazy this track can get. And as you said, it is one of the rare occasions uh, where the circuit can be run in, in both directions, and, and they do so. Um, but I am I fail to come up of a, with a racing series that doesn't do well around here because True. it's such a unique layout. Like, it's short, yeah. and it yeah. doesn't have a ton of fast, sweeping corners and things like that. Mm. But the corners it does have and the undulation really does lend itself to a fantastic racetrack. And so, uh, yeah, of all the cars that you could bring here, Formula Vs is definitely one of the ones that are up there. And let's not forget, next week on Wednesday, we're coming here in the TCRs. Yeah, nice. Nice. That will be well worth the price of admission. Don't worry about that. Um, four minutes gone already. Sam Chapman, the leader from Glen Center Adele. And then, of course, Joe Baldwin's moved himself up nicely in the third place. Just ahead of Aiden Schultz. That battle pack, actually, is what you're looking at on screen there at the moment. Turner, Baker, King in close tow. Invert position currently being held down by Ryan Tate as we ride on board with Luke Turner in fifth place now. Got to be... Got to be careful with these Formula Vs, especially around here, because of the the banking on some of the corners, not least the ripple strips as well, um, and the tightness, particularly of that last corner. Overtaking opportunities aren't as free flowing as they would be on some of the other circuits. This is a great little bull ring track. Um, I mean, it's essentially Australia's equivalent to Lakeside. Uh, sorry, the world's equivalent to Australia's Lakeside. Um, if if I'm being perfectly honest, Lime Rock Park's another one that you'd throw in the same category. Um, we'll be in for Super Formula Light. Very nicely done. Um, Kurt, we'll see you on the grid for that. Hopefully uh, um, perfectly well nourished after uh, taking Tucker in time for Formula V. In the meantime, look, I'll tell you what, that was Joe Baldwin kicks, kicking up a bit of dust on the exit of the dog leg. And he's got uh, good company here in pressure mounting. In the form of Schultz, Turner, Baker and King. The closest battles on the racetrack right now. Turner, actually, Cedo, Riddell and Chapman are very close together as well. Cedo just, oh no, there goes Turner, uh, Luke Turner. Luke Turner's gone round. And that's him out of the battle pack. And nicely got out of the way as well for the oncoming traffic. Turner drops to 13th, and that's costly. It's given Joe Baldwin breathing space, and Aiden Schultz as well. Schultz has got by Baldwin while more that's been unfolding. Baker King had to take evasive action. It's cost them in the, in the greater scheme of things. And this is the battle that I was talking about. Chapman and Riddell. Look at them just riding those curbs ever so gently. Effortlessly. 
Chapman holding on for dear life here. Cedo mounting a challenge, a serious one at that. Happy to put the pressure on, but also happy to just sit there and wait. Wait no more, down the inside. Oh, Chapman has gone deep, very deep, two deep, round he goes. Another one bites the dust. Chapo loops it at the final quarter. Cedo inherits the lead and a fairly sizable advantage as well. Everybody's tripping up uh, in the opening race of the new season. Everybody's tripping up in the opener. Adam Lavis has gone round. Um, Luke Turner's gone round. Was there a bit of contact there? It doesn't matter if there was because the lockup was all on his own. And um, Jack Humphrey's off the road again as well. Chapman holding down second. Baldwin Schultz, Baker, third, fourth, fifth. They've gapped Phil King, left him behind. Adam Lavis, the beneficiary of all of that. He's moved up back into seventh spot now. Case of what might have been really for him. Ryan Tate, Chris Stark, Dan Bardish, eight, nine, and ten. Um, now, hang on. Not sure what's going on here, Daniel, but there's a fair bit of pit activity. Pete Matz and Kevin Henderson have both been on the line for about a minute apiece. Humphreys, Turner, and uh, Heaney have just gone there. Greg Heaney only for a fast repair, and he's back out on the racetrack. Turner's still on pit road. Humphreys as well. And Tim Watson's out there two laps down, having stopped for a minute 22. <clears throat> um, there's a reason why Greg Padgett's in Singleton. We mentioned it on Monday night. We'll mention it again a little bit later on. Um, we're thinking of you, Greg, and uh, we'd all be there if we could be. Tony Baker, fourth at the moment. Nice to have you tuning in, mate. Hope you enjoy the uh, the show. Um, and I know it's not um, the greatest of reasons to be in Singleton. In fact, it's bloody awful, but Singleton's a lovely part of the world, and I'm sure you'll in, in, enjoy uh, the sights and sounds of the area. They've got some nice cafes and pubs. Nine minutes gone of a 10 minute heat. Will the white flag fly this time by? No, because they're back to the line way too quick for the clock. So this will be an 11 lap heat. Joe Baldwin, Joe Baldwin trying to find his way back into the contest. Down the inside of Tony Baker. Baker back up on the outside, getting the tie from Schultz. Down to turn one we go. Who's the last of the late breakers? Oh, bold and brave from Joe Baldwin to hold fourth down for the moment. Chapman's 1.77 behind Cedo. First and second accounted for. Don't worry about that. They've just got to bring it to the line in one piece. White flag in the air next time by. The all eyes on this battle here for third. Schultz holds it down. Baldwin there in fourth. Baker and Phil King, who's come on leaps and bounds. His Formula V performances have been really good of late. Then that next group is Lavis, Tate, Stark and Bartish. White flag flies. Bartish, of course, holds down the invert pole position at the moment. The way things stand. Have a look at Baldwin. Crocker Joe sends it down the inside of Schultz to turn one and goes back to third. It's like a mini roller coaster, this first sector. I absolutely love it. And then the climb up the hills, the tough part. That's the slog of the lap. Through. Knock Hill's answer to the chase. Just a little bit quicker. Through they go. It's Schultz all over the back of Baldwin, hassling in all the way to the line. Baldwin rides the Ooh. curb, rides the dirt. Has he made himself vulnerable to Schultz? He's going to send Schultz the high side. He's going to defend the inside line as though his life depends on it. Schultz gets his nose in front. He goes to third. Deep, deep, deep. Got it. Well done, Aiden Schultz. Sudo gets the job done. Chapman holds on to second. Schultz and Baldwin. Schultz got it. Baldwin, Baker and King. Ravis in for seventh. Ryan Tate, eighth. Ninth will go to Chris Stark. And Dan Bardish is a long way away. Coming home in 10. Brendan Neal on 11th. Greg Heaney, 12th. A lap down. Luke Turner, a lap down. Kevin Henderson, a lap down. And Tim Watson, two laps down. Will make up the running order. Oh, boy. We're back with a bang.
That was a, uh, I love my Formula V. It is, it, it, it is good. That was a pretty hectic start to that one, an unfortunate one for uh, Adam Lavis, but uh, I believe he ended up coming out. What position did he finish there? I'm not too sure. I think seventh, maybe? So he managed yeah, to recover back. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, he did well. Um, right now, what's what's interesting there is we're going to jump straight away into race two. Uh, clock moves to 11.20 in the morning. Doesn't matter because we're into daylight saving, that progressive and civilised concept the Queensland nuds bugger all about um, in uh, Scotland at this time. Uh, server time, March 27, 2024. So daylight's not going to be an issue here. 24 degrees the track temp, 19 the ambient. Let's get ready to rock and roll once more. Nomanson and Baz get the invert. That means nothing because, oh, hang on. Now, that's interesting. Have we gone full invert here? Yes, we It's have. now a full invert for Formula V. Oh, yes, boy. Yes, it's a full invert for the second race. Top 10 reverse grid for the third. Ah, okay. So a couple of changes season on season. It's now a full invert grid for race two for 15 minutes. Let's go. This is going to throw the cat amongst the pigeons and rattle things up nicely. Shake and stir. Pete Matson's going to lead the field to turn one. Now, I was a little bit thrown off by that because obviously, um, as I said at the start, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So two things remain the same here. The race format and also the, uh, the serving Formula V on a Thursday night in the main course slot, what would normally be the entree on any other night of the week. But what changes is, uh-oh, trouble, trouble, bye-bye. brighini has gone, unfortunately. Now, I was trying to do some calculations here as well. Anyone that uh, failed to finish, you had to get to nine laps to be classified as... 75% race distance as well. There were a couple that failed to do that. So therefore, um, that uh, does unfortunately impact the, the number of finishes that we'll have classified at the end of that race just now. What's also unfortunate is that Aiden Schultz has just messaged me and said he, he's had to take work call and therefore he's bailed exit stage left for the night. Uh-oh, that's trouble. Mounting and looming there. They were three abreast on the run down to turn one, and there was not a coat of varnish between them. Thankfully, no wheel banging, and Adam Laver stays out of trouble for the moment. Tim Watson, however, does not. Dan Bardish drops two wheels in the dirt as well. Laver struggling to find a way through here in ninth. So, no Schultz, no Baz, no Nomanson. Three non-starters. Humphrey's already out of business. Um, so we're down to 15 already. Off! goes Pistol Pete. Tim Watson's on the tow rope into pit lane. So the contenders are dropping like flies here. We're down to a field of 13 and have a look at them. Exit stage left, Dan Bardish and Chris Stark. Stage left as we look at it, stage right as you look at it, ladies and gentlemen, as the drivers look at it on coming onto the main straight. Oh boy. Such drama here in the opening stages. And now that I've explained all the idiosyncrasies of it, we can actually get down to the business of calling the race. Now, Kevin Henderson, that's Hendo up there, already out of the dogland, gone. See you later. Hendo just needs to keep it on the black stuff and he's as good as home. I mean, that's extraordinary. Um, what's also worth clarifying there, and it was one of the points I wanted to make, Oh, oh, no trouble! No. Chapman's been sent! Chapman has been sent by a rejoin from Brendan Nealon. And not the best one in the world you've ever seen. Have a look at the wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact here and watch Sam Chapman fly. Bang! <laughs> Fly being the operative word. So much air. <laughs> and, and, and the hang time on that was impressive. And the fact that it didn't barrel roll on him when he landed, that was even better. Chump in the pit lane to get a fast repair. So another contender bites the dust. This is a third race. is going to be very uh, juicy now with the invert top 10 situation as well. Um, so regular viewers of ours, we haven't had a full reverse grid on broadcast for a while, um, but regular viewers of ours will know that um, iRacing's not, not as intelligent as it might seem. 
um, and that's well documented. We've um, had good fun poking that issue over the years, which is why there were two bare spots on the grid there because it still uh, counted uh, David Baz and also Kurt Nomanson as being on the grid. And so the front row was essentially left vacant for no good reason at all. Um, and that was well worth pointing out too. So now with four laps gone, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Trent Lavis with uh, the uh, early clubhouse leader for comment of the night thus far. Um, Hendo, Turner, Baker, Tate, Lavis and Baldwin, the top six. Cedo is seventh. King, Neilon, Stark, Matson. Take us back to 11th. There's been a fair bit of trouble here in the early stages, but the trouble is about to mount for Kevin Henderson as well, Daniel Correa-Sar, because look at th this pack of chasing cars. They are just reeling him in as though he's standing still. He had the three-point... Oh, Phil King's off the road! Locked it up on the exit, on the entry to the right-hander, and he meets the kitty litter. Rejoins, but drops well off the pack. Kevin Henderson, however, was about three and a half seconds to the good. That's whittled down to 2.4. And there's still 10 minutes on the clock. Yeah, just touching on what you said there earlier, Zach. So Kevin Henderson is doing a great job down at the front there. 2.5 seconds to the good. With Luke Turner in close uh, with about a second there to, to Tony Baker there in P3. Now, this train, which was one car longer until, uh, as you said, Phil King <laughs> went off into the sand there, uh, they've done really well in the sense that they're not fighting each other too hard. And because of that, they can use each other to propel faster forward, uh, which is exactly why that time has come further down, as Sam Chapman just says the fastest at 58.58. Um, so he's obviously flying... Uh, Obviously, it's a lot better that he's doing it on the track rather than in the air this time by. Uh, as Tate tries to go down the inside, but the problem here mm. at Knockhill is that's such a gradient that you lose so much speed if you take the sharp inside. So it didn't work out for him. He actually lost the position there. Glenn Riddell takes that back, goes up into P5 now, and he'll be chasing Adam Lavis as this little four-car train tries to get to the back of Tony Baker and possibly oh, fight nice. for the last step on the podium. Well, time will tell. We hit the six minute 20 mark. But for now, Lady was just doing really well. We'll have to have a look at uh, the end of this call uh, with regards to where we're going and when for all Formula B. Sprite inside of Formula B on a Thursday night throughout the course of the season, ladies and gentlemen. We're very excited about it. Henderson, Ooh, Turner, Baker, Lavis. Take. Uh oh. Let's take him uh, with the and Tate come unstuck. Um. Neilon, Matson, Heaney, Chapman, and Bartish uh, take us back to 14. Oh, there was contact. Here, actually... Yeah, you, you can't keep running as close as they have been for so long without uh, eventually bumping wheels and nose cones and the like. Um, seven minutes gone. We've started lap eight. Henderson leads. There's Tony Baker. Go going down on the inside of Luke Turner to move up into second spot. So pulse tuning. Two and three at the moment. Lavis is fourth up nine spots. Thursday Night Football tonight is, uh, well, in the AFL, it's, uh, I believe, St Kilda up against the Western Bulldogs. That one uh, being played under the roof at Marvel. And, of course, in the NRL over at the new Sydney Football Stadium, uh, Allianz Stadium, it is the Roosters up against the Storm. Um, as a Storm supporter, I've got one eye on that game tonight. I'll keep an eye on it for you. We'll take you around the grounds as the night unfolds. And, um, and looking forward to doing so immensely. Um, that usual ritual of having one eye on the footy and one eye on us, ladies and gentlemen. If I can do it, so can you. Seven minutes left in this one. The second one of the night. Um... And then, of course, we go Super Formula Light Racing from... So that's the big change season on season, term on term, is that the Porsches are out, the Super Formula Lights have moved from a Friday night to a Thursday night, and, um, and we'll be bringing you uh, an all-open-wheel affair on a Thursday night from this point forward. So um, the next 10 weeks, if you like your open-wheel racing, Thursday Night Motorsport is the place to be on the platforms of the Gentleman Sim Racing Club. And it's all made possible with thanks to Sprite Insider. We ride on board with Joe Baldwin in sixth place at the moment, following Glen Cedo. Cedo locking it up. They ride the ripple strips. 
they're, they're very generous with how much of the ripple strip they take, let's be perfectly honest. Yeah, they run down towards the final corner. The car, the, these cars can be quite forgiving like that just because of the way that they're set up. The only problem is that um, they don't play well with losing um, contact uh, onto the track. So if you go too high, for example, if you're going through that uh, uphill kick, as you say, the, the knock hills version of the chase, um, if you get too much, if your tyre comes off the, the track too much, it, it tends to want to rotate the direction of the tyre that's still on the track. So you do have to be very careful uh, when you do that. The other thing to, to touch on is um, just remember that Super Formula lights are rain enabled. Aha, yes. Yes. So, I think we're excited about the rain now. Yeah. Over in the Tampa system. And, yep, uh, a, birdie, a birdie has told me that we might actually be in for a wet one at Monza. Even better. Um, now, uh, important to note that um, uh, they're, they're just holding a minute silence at the NRL, and that'll no doubt be in relation to the recent uh, horrific events that have unfolded in uh, in Sydney and Western Sydney. Um, firstly, Bondi Junction on Saturday, and then, of course, um, in that uh, uh, church um, facility on, uh, was it Monday night or Tuesday night as well? So just extraordinary, the events that have unfolded in Sydney um, incredibly sad uh the last week or so um chris stark eighth place at the moment doing a nice job of it uh, all over the back of phil king here on the run to turn one jack humphrey's the only retirement of the race we're down to oh geez we're down to 15. tim watson's out there a lap down everybody else well he actually he's a lap and three quarters down Dan Bardish is three quarters of a lap down as well. So, a few notable spinners tonight, a few notable ups and T's as well. I mentioned John Merritt at the top of the call. But Pulse Boy's flying the stable in his absence, flying the flag for the stable, rather. Baker and Turner second and third. We ride on board with Bridell at the moment on his way back through the field. Having a difficult time of trying to find his way by Joe Baldwin, but does so. Does so. Very nicely done. He left it late trying to get out of the slipstream there of old Joe. Jeez, that was tight. It was actually due to a uh, switchback through that corner. We'll try and get a shot of it here. So as you Have can see, Baldwin is on the back. He shoots over to the inside, trying to hold onto that line and basically just went a little too deep, lost that speed in the top. And Riddell obviously kept it. So that's why you saw that massive swerve because he didn't realize that he'd catch him so quick. There it goes. And avoids the contact. So it was an ambitious move by Baldwin, just didn't end up working. Here we go. Cito in fifth place at the moment. Yeah, I wasn't so much surprised by the move from Baldwin, but the um, the aggressiveness um, and the and the close call of the switchback from Cito mm. did did surprise me. Uh, three minutes to go. Hendo started lap 13. This one should go to 16 laps. And we are watching Luke Turner all over the back of Tony Baker here. Will there be team orders at play or not? Baker, of course, running a, 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 a strikingly different looking livery as well. And it looks good. Change as good as a holiday. The, the paint schemes had a little bit of a, been given a little bit of a birthday, a Christmas present. And uh, it does uh, stand out. I believe. Not, just because of the, not just because of the yellow. Uh, I, I must admit. I believe we yeah. saw a preview of that in the 86s at Sandown. I think you're right, yeah. Yeah, I believe, I think it was Tony that was running that inverted style livery where it's got the predominant on the back. I actually quite like it, I will admit. I feel as though I've got a, more of a bias towards the original because it's what I'm used to. But I will say, I, I'm, I'm a fan of the, uh, of the inverted colours. Big weekend of motorsport in the real world coming up this weekend as Ooh, well. Yes. Just an enormous amount of um, of motorsport, Formula One, World Superbikes, IndyCar, NASCAR, World Endurance Championship. Apparently, uh, the supercars are having a rock and roll as well. WeatherTech Sports Car, um, IMSA Championship too. So, if you're a motorsport fan, we've got you covered this weekend, no doubt about that. Fox Sports will be the place to be. For the uh, for the most of it, keep an eye also out for um, 
the uh, High Tech All Super Series down at Sydney Motorsport Park if you're looking for something local. Round they come onto the main straight. That was a nice move from Luke Turner down on the inside of Tony Baker. Got the job done and moved himself up into second spot. They have not been able to catch Hendo. Two laps to go. Hendo on track for a win here. Two seconds to the good. And he hasn't had to take any risks whatsoever. Built his lead on the opening lap and has consolidated ever since. It's a, it's a stellar drive for him, and we're used to see... This could be a, a bit of an evolution for Kevin Anderson because you and I both know usually we see him in a battle pack and then coming off the wrong side of a battle pack. But in this case, he got out ahead and just went... Yeah, this is mine. I've got this. Two seconds. Uh, and there hasn't even been fighting yeah. between Luke Turner and Tony Baker. They haven't been holding each other up at all. So Kev Kevin is just away with it on pace alone. Basically, has led from the opening lap. So it's a lights out the flag performance or near enough to it from Kevin Henderson. White flag in the air. One more time around at Knock Hill. <laughs> Not the uh, the most off the scale Formula V race we've ever seen in our time, <laughs> no, no. But, but certainly entertaining in its own right. I, I think we still need a few more numbers on the grid here. I don't, I don't know why this isn't the hottest ticket in town every Thursday night, quite frankly. Let's have a look at this, Pete Matson. Uh oh. Well, well, unfortunately, for the pulse tuning entry, I think that was Brendan Neal, and you can't park there, Brendan. I mean, uh, when you pull up. And, and come to almost a complete halt. Look at Lavis. That's Where exactly come what's going to happen. Adam Lavis! Coming home like a steam train. Up into third. Baker's going to force the issue on the inside on the run down to the final corner. Here we go. Last turn. Check it. Flag. We're into overtime. Kevin Henderson's going to be the second different race winner of the night. It's going to be a drag race for third. Second's going to go to Luke Turner. Hendo, a winner once more in Formula V for Sprite and Cider. And Lavis comes from nowhere to pip Tony Baker for the final spot of the podium. Gino in for fifth. Post boys left, right and centre and all of that. Oz E races Joe Baldwin and Adam Lavis also in the thick of that. Third and sixth respectively for Trucker. Then Phil King, Chris Stark, Ryan Tate and Sam Chapman. Chapo. Chapo has somehow got himself on pole for the... For the, the <laughs> he has, he's gone through pit lane, he's grabbed a fast repair, and he's fought back and ended up in bloody tent. So he'll get the invert. Oh, he, he couldn't have written that, that script any better if he tried. He, he's the one that puts this championship schedule and the rules and everything together, isn't it? He couldn't have rigged it better. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. That'll give him, obviously, uh, the uh, the biggest advantage going into this third race. So we'll see if he can capitalise on that. Uh, uh, I, I'd almost be willing to put my house on it. The problem is it's not mine. It belongs to somebody else. I just rented. Um, <laughs> now, um, Kevin Henderson from Luke Turner. Then Adam Lavers, Tony Baker, Glenn Riddell. Joe Baldwin in for sixth. And he'll uh, join us in just a moment. Phil King, Chris Stark, Ryan Tate and Sam Chapman. Trucker. Um, a couple of skirmishes with the kitty litter um, and the wrong side of the ripple strips from you in the first couple of races, and we happen to have evidence of that on film. Um, however, Knock Hill, Formula V, a little cauldron like this is a nice way to get the season going. Certainly is. It's a great little venue. It's um, very, very technical, but I think it's the new spa. Like with all the uh, the off tracks, are, they're brutal here. Like you, <laughs> you jump over the sausage curbs, you don't touch the off tracks or even go to the top of the grass, and you get a second slowdown without a without an off track. It's it discourages you from uh, racing hard and giving us your room. But it is what it is, you know. I um, yeah, I've had a couple of good finishes, you know, despite the hiccups. Despite the hiccups indeed, what are, what are uh, your thoughts on race three, mate? I mean, this new format, it's going to be interesting because we've got, um, obviously, uh, a full invert. That's rare for us these days um, on these platforms, a full invert for race two, and then still we invert the, the, the top ten finishing order from race two for race three as well. We do, and it's uh, it's going to be probably hard to catch um, Chapo up the front there. He had a bit of... Um, it was a bit unlucky though, I'm not sure who it was that went off and um, had a bit of an off there through the back straight kink and they just clashed wheels, it was right in front of me there early on, I think about lap three. 
and uh, poor Chapo got speared off to the right hand side. But um, yes. absolutely, yeah, but, yeah, he would he would have been. Uh, I wouldn't have wanted to be on the inside of his helmet. I reckon no. all the words would have been flying. But uh, he'll he'll be hard to catch in this one starting up the front. He's uh, he's pretty good in these cars. So there's. Um, but I got uh, yeah, I got some heavy hitters there behind me. Kevin had a good run in that one, so I'll be uh, hopefully he'll uh, pull up through the field in this one and put on a good race. All right, mate, go and get amongst it. We'll talk to you about this and uh, also see the formula light at the end. Definitely will. Thanks, mate. Joe Baldwin from the other side of the Nullarbor doing a nice job as per usual. So, Chapo has pole. Ryan Tate there alongside him. Chris Stark, Phil King from the second row. Joe Baldwin, Glenn Cedar, Riddell the third. Then Tony Baker, Adam Lavis, Luke Turner and Kevin Henderson make up the top ten. So, Hendo's got all the work to do ahead of him here after a great win second up. Then we go back to Brendan Nealon and Pete Matson, Greg Heaney, Dan Bartish, then Tim Watson, Jack Humphreys, Kurt Nomanson and David Baz. So... Cedo chalked up uh, the W in the first one. The second one went to Kevin Henderson. What do we have in store here for this third and final race? We're about to find out. Lights on, revs rise, cars roar. Green once more at Knock Hill. Uh-oh, fuck, he went nowhere. Then kicked it into gear and got going but dropped a bunch of spots. Lost five spots on the run to the first corner. And already big gaps between... Oh! oh no! It gets worse for Starkey. Oh! Uh oh Oh, no. <laughs> he was just on a wild ride as the passenger. And unfortunately, there was no pulling that thing up. Once you're rolling down the hills here, good luck putting the brakes on. Starkey got sent. Have a look at this. Oh, side by side with Hendo. And then two innocent bystanders, including Pete Matson, caught up in all of it. Maddo's on the tow rope already. The job's just about done. Stark back into 14th place now, and the job is just about done. There'll be no coming back from that, I wouldn't imagine. The rest of the field complete the opening lap. Chapman leads over Ryan Tate. Baldwin's 1.3 back. I think the top two are looking to take off and let the rest fight for the Miners. That certainly seems to be the intention. Baldwin's created a nice little bumper for himself ahead of Tony Baker. Phil King's right there. So too Cedo. So too Lavis. And then a gap back to Turner. A gap back to Neilon. A gap back to Bardish. And then Hendo and Watson. So Hendo... Lucky in many respects not to be wiped out completely on the back of Chris Stark's moment. Greg Heaney's come to pit lane and grabbed a fast repair. And uh, Matson's still on pit road at the moment on that tow rope. So two minutes gone and Chapman the leader. Looking good for three different winners in as many races tonight. Daniel Kriasar. Yeah, well, at uh, the start of this one, surely made up for the bit of processional race that we had in the second one. Yeah, bloody, bloody hell, that was, that was interesting. It was, it was so was unfortunate fun. for Starkey, though. Like, he obviously didn't mean to come back onto the track that way, but these cars, you can hold the brakes all you want, but sometimes they just want to slide, and that's exactly what happened. He got touched off the track, and then the car turned round, so it decided that uh, it would go in reverse, and unfortunately, yeah, back on, and collected those other two so yeah not great uh for those guys but if sam chapman uh well even so he didn't really get that much of an advantage tate is right there and so is joe baldwin they're both within five tenths of each other there's a slight gap to tony baker there in p4 but we've got 15 minutes on the clock so i can only imagine tony will most likely be able to close down that gap it'll depend on how hard joe baldwin fights with the cars ahead uh but the other thing that he has to do uh, sorry tony baker has to do is look in that rearview mirror because he does have a significant amount of cars coming up pretty fast and it looks like Lavis wants to be one closer again as he goes around the outside down the hill and gets it done Now, uh, a point that I've been trying to get back to for about half an hour, I think, is um, you might have noticed earlier in the week, you might have noticed tonight, we're slightly earlier on air. 
um, for Thursday night than what we were last season. Have a look at the run from Joe Baldwin. I'm coming back to that in a moment. Straight up the outside of Ryan Tate. Puts himself on the inside for the final corner. And now goes, goes out in pursuit of Sam Chapman. Baldwin to second. Nicely done. Um, we've been able to bring things forward a little bit for those of you on the eastern seaboard and even uh, um, those of you in New Zealand because of the fact that we're now only operating with three time zones on this continent, uh, much to the relief of people like yours truly. Good fight back from Ryan Tate to displace Joe Baldwin once more. Um, last term, of course, when we were starting at 7.40 Eastern Daylight Time, it was only 4.40 in the West. At least now, we're starting 7.25 Eastern. And uh, as Chris Stark joins us, we'll get to him in just a moment. Um, uh, that is now only 25 past five on the West Coast. So we've been able to uh, bring things slightly forward. It inconveniences me because I've still got to record Home and Away and watch it later. Uh, as Baldwin goes up the outside of Brian Tate once more, um, you know, deja vu. We we're here a lap ago doing the exact same manoeuvre, Joe. Down the inside. Can he keep Tate at bay this time by? Oh, it's going to be too early to tell because Tate's going to get a good run up the hill down the main straight. But Baldwin actually this time round has had a better run of it. Can he hold Tate on the run to turn one? No. The up and under and the slipstream eventually works to Tate's advantage. And he goes back to second. All the meanwhile, that's just helping Sam Chapman take off. Check out and say, thanks for coming. I'll take the victory. Oh, off goes Tate. That's costly. Kicked up the kitty lid up. And that's gifted Joe Baldwin second. So, yeah, um, if you are noticing that we are starting slightly earlier, um, it's only because of the fact that uh, there's now only a two-hour lapse between the East and West Coast, not three. So it's 15 minutes earlier on air, 7.25, not 7.40 on a Thursday night and also a Monday night as well. Starkey, um, firstly, it wasn't in gear and then, unfortunately, it just very quickly and rapidly so went downhill. Oh, I didn't hear we were on board with me, were you? I didn't put it in gear. You're absolutely correct. I let the clutch out and nothing happened. And I went, <laughs> oh, my God, no. Uh, it must be frustrating when the, when the night ends like that, mate, because, to be fair, you're at the right end of the field, ready to have a good crack. Yeah, I had a, a shocker qualifier, and I did all right in race one. Didn't do too bad in race two. I was up there in race three, and then I thought, oh, yeah, here we go, good start. It's just one of those things with me. When I start off the front, it all goes pear-shaped, and I just forgot to put it in first. The, the stupidest thing, I call it a brooksy. I forgot to put it in gear. I took that little clutch out, and I heard... Oh, call it a Brooksy. Just, what is it about you blokes? Um, oh, look at that. Cedo now makes his presence known. He announces his arrival in this battle for second. Cedo's got by Baldwin. Looks to go by Tate on the inside of the run over the final quarter. It's a three-way fight for second. I'm coming back to you, Starkey. Oh, Baldwin gets into Tate. Tate goes round. Baldwin goes with him. And Baldwin will sit there and redress. Two contenders out of the fight. Yeah, that's tough. It's it's such a draft track. I mean, you're going down that back straight. I mean, Joe's just, you know, tapper on. He's probably faster into there than he was the lap before. It's just, just one of those things. Um, speaking of uh, your week, uh, Starkey, so uh, unfortunately forgot to put it in gear tonight. Oh, Tony Baker puts it off the road. Opens the door up. Adam Lavis won't wait for a second invitation. Thanks for coming. Luke Turner capitalises on it as well. And Phil King's right there ready to pounce. How good's that? Um, Monday night didn't go to plan either, my friend. Yeah, my, my direct drive died. It just died. I don't know what happened, but it just died. And I couldn't do anything. So I jumped into race control like last second. So I didn't really issue penalties. I just did uh, redresses as best I could. Just one of those things. Um, it, it like the screen went out and it wouldn't turn on again. Here I was thinking that you were being the sacrificial lamb, taking one for the team and 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 opting out of the carnage that ensued with 48 cars around Winton. But no, it was it was mechanical. Yeah, it was uh, well electrical, mechanical. But how was the permeable race car of Jaden Green? He just cleaned up. He did so well at that track. He he, he makes set for us. Oh, I can't drive his sets. I don't know how he does it. It's a bit like a Greg Favell set, but he did. 
Indeed. Um, green's well set up for the season, mate, and, and nice to see Ford actually competitive again in the supercars because that has been Holden's playground for a while, particularly with the likes of Cairns and Favelle. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was surprised that he won, but he did so well. Unfortunately, he's one of those fly-in, fly-out workers, so it's like every second week that he can race. Yeah. Otherwise, oh, 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 trouble, Phil King! That was a knock-on effect of the pack being backed up, and King just wasn't able to react quick enough. Baker loses out to Tate. Tate fighting back, gets back over to fourth place. Next target, Adam Lavis. Baker fifth, Baldwin sixth, and Turner seventh. It's a four-way fight for the for the minor placings in the mid-pack of the top ten. Yeah, I got it. And um, yourself and Pistol I Pete still on pit lane, stuck. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. I, I got damaged, but it didn't give me a um, a, a meatball. But every time, and I'll go and do some practice for the uh, the wings. Are you, are you broadcasting the wings and slicks next? Yes, mate. Yes, yeah. we're we're on it. Uh, we're hope staying. Hope it's not raining. At 10:30. <laughs> well, well we've, we've heard mixed reports. Yeah. So if, you, if you're able to get to the server and verify it for us, that'd be greatly appreciated. Oh, I know when I did some practice, it was flooded. And if you go down the left-hand side of the main oh, no. straight, you're going to wind up in the wall. So you've got to go yeah. to the right, but hopefully it's not raining, I think. Uh, Thursday night football, Melbourne leading the Roosters 6-0. We return to Formula V for Sprite and Cider and Joe Baldwin in sixth place trying to get down on the inside. Uh, Tony Baker to turn one. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Tony got d damage from that contact at the last corner of the incident. Oh, yeah. Oh, geez, that was a nice little bobble and a save as well for Baker. Under pressure now from Turner. Ball went out in pursuit of Tate to try and win the battle fairly, <laughs> cleanly. And, and, not, and great sportsmanship. The president leading by example, um, redressing that, sacrificing his own race um, after being involved in that incident with with Tate. Oh, what's happened there? Truck has oh, given himself up. It, uh, it's such so a track. We hit the curbs. You hit the curbs in these cars. It unsettles them. So you've got to lift. If you get it right, you can keep it flat. But if you don't get it right, you have to lift. Otherwise, you're going to fly off. I mean, race two, I took that last turn. I actually banged down too many gears and it spun me around. I compression locked it. Uh, just one of those things. Um, Turner under pressure there. Baldwin gets by on the inside. And so he's back hard. in the sixth place. The comment on the right side of the screen, hadn't had a chance to have a look at it for a while. Sam Chapman's taken off and leads by six and a half seconds. Chapman is gone. He's out of here. Uh, just write the check now. Yeah, he'll, he'll drive that home. Sam's really good in the Vs. I don't know if you saw that video where he went to the supercar presentations and he actually got the... Um, yeah, one of the trophies for uh, online racing for, for winning the yes. so he's he's really good. He'll eventually win a GSRC uh, Formula V title again. Um, I mean, he's been he's been uh, always ultra competitive, but he's been tripped up by either not being here or um, being suspended or. <laughs> Getting caught up in incidents that require his attendance in race control. Oh, let, let, dear. Let's not talk about the suspensions. It's a bit of a sore point for Sam. I know. No. But he does it with a laptop. Like, he has a, a gaming laptop, which is yep. impressive. Oh, this, it's, is what, it's, this is why I'm mentioning now. it, because he's not in the booth. I might mention it when he's here. Yeah, um, yeah, now, just to, oh, tight. Just to bring that up, it's better now. Not only is he running on a laptop, right, a razor blade, so it's got some power, but it's a laptop nonetheless. He just set up triple screens on it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, right -o. Okay. The only reason well, I know that, this that is because he asked my advice. So, and I told him, I said, I would get a desktop PC if I were you. And in true Sam Chapman, he's like, yeah, but I'll try this first. And anyway, <laughs> yep. it's working for him. So he's going to do his Why not? I get down the inside. Baker on Tate, Baker on Tate, Baker back to fourth. We're on to lap 14. This and two more to go. These guys are completing lap 13. Have a look at Tate back up on the outside of Baker. Baldwin on the outside of Turner as well. There's tears brewing here. Oh, isn't there? Yeah, oh yeah. In every brewing. sense of the word, but not just yet. Baker moves through on the inside, goes back to fourth. So. Forget about the top three. They're as lonely as they'll ever be in this sport, in this caper. Oh. Chapman 5.7 to Riddell, and Riddell two seconds back to Lavis. Our eyes on the, on the fights behind them. 
Yeah, Jay bouncing on the curb, got a bit of dirt, so that, that took a bit of uh, momentum yeah. out of him. Yeah, that might help Luke Turner. Six all now, Thursday night football. The Roosters quick to respond after Melbourne scored first. Turner in seventh place. Riding on board with him, following Joe Baldwin. These, these two battles have simmered somewhat. The um, only close battle on the circuit at the moment is Bre uh, Brendan Nealon and Dan Bartish for 10th and 11th. We've still got 13 runners. We only started this race with 15. Jack Humphreys was a retirement. A DNS, if you like. Oh, really? He was really yep. quick too. Yep. So Humphreys didn't start race three. Schultz didn't start race two or three. And of course, Baz and Nomanson didn't start at all um, tonight. So very small turnout for Sprite inside of Formula V, but the racing has been interesting. There's no doubt about that. Half a minute left on the clock. Chapman's about to get the white flag one more time around. That's the battle to keep an eye on. Bardish and Nealon. Turner closing in on Baldwin as well. Tate's still there with Baker. White flag in the air. Let's go one more time around. It's a very spread out track. Very spread out field. Yep. Not what we like to see in Formula V, but um, uh, you, you, you contributed to the cause there, Starkey, unfortunately. Oh, there's Luke Turner. Turner's pulling up. Turner's day is done. What's going on here? Luke Turner Oh, the engine blew. The engine's Oh, gone. no. How the Kev, hell do you blow up a V? Kev Henderson's blown it up as well. So Hendo and also Luke Turner have blown up. Their day done. And that will uh, shrink the field once more. Hendo gets out in 5.87 seconds, having reported to pit lane for a fast repair. And so Hendo back onto the track in 10th. And at the front, it is Sam Chapman, just in uncharted territory. He's in a different postcode compared to everybody else. Chapman gets the job done in race three. Tito goes second. Third will go to Adam Lavis. Three of the regulars at the pointy end. Baker holds off Tate. Baldwin comes home in sixth, then Phil King in seventh. Wow. In the end, that was clinical from Chapman. Uh, we both said it, Daniel Correa Sar. Um, the, the fact that he had the the invert pole position, uh, he couldn't have rigged it any better, but he at least capitalised on it and made it work in his favour. Yeah, 100%. And um, right. no, 6.5 seconds. Well, it, was, it was so away with that. Didn't put a foot wrong at all. I think he might have even had the best lap time of the race doing a quick scan there yeah 58.6 wow i don't think i've ever seen two v's blow up in one race no that's true yeah that's unusual oh, did someone else just die again oh no that was uh that's turn out the back so, yep yeah so kevin was smoking so he was lucky not to blow up but turner yeah. just went bang he, he he was able to at least get it back to pit lane and get it sorted and you're right turner's just exploded yeah, on wow. him. How good's it going to be when iRacing will actually, now that they've got the rain sorted, they'll leave oil on the circuit for you. Um, Seriously? That'll, uh, that'll add to the spice just yeah. a little bit more. Hey, uh, Starkey, apart from hoping that it doesn't rain, um, at Monza, what else are you looking forward to about the Super Formulas and the Formula V as the season goes, Ed? Well, I hope we start to get the numbers like we did in the Super 2. The Super 2 was, uh, like, last season, we only got like 20 or 12 or 13 cars turn up for race ones. Copy that. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping the fields are a little bit bigger and better as well. Starkey dropping in and out a, uh, a little oh. bit there at the moment. I'll get back to you very shortly, mate. There's the results for the round, actually. Oh, geez, Daniel, onto that very quickly. Yeah, these are um, provisional, of course, but yeah, they yeah, are. Yeah, absolutely, they are. Um, Riddell Chapman. So Riddell wins the round. That was my next question. And Riddell Chapman, Lavis, Baker, Baldwin, and then Henderson, King, Tate, Turner, and Bartish. Well, you're going to be excited by the, the Super Formulas. There's a massive field already joined. Excellent. We're excited about that, um, especially if it rains. Oh, I hope oh, we get the same numbers that we have in Super 2. Super 2 was insane. The amount of people that turned up for Winton, I was like, oh my God, I picked the wrong track for the start. Well, well, the amount, yeah, actually, you're right. The amount of people that turned up was one thing to be surprised by, but the fact that they turned up for Winton, yes. Yeah. 
All right. Oh, hang on. Nice it's wet, Zach, so I'm going to jump out and do some driving. Good luck. Go well. You'll need it. Um, <laughs> thanks, mate. The week can only get better for Starkey. Um, it can't get much better than that for Sam Chapman, though. Uh, mate, very good evening to you. Welcome to a new season. Um, we're excited about Sprite Inside a form of the V as per usual. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You have tweaked and tinkered with it, though. Um, and, and we're just wanting to understand and, and get an answer from you as to how you managed to rig that so well in your favour. Uh... Oh, I wouldn't call the consolation race rigging in my favour. To be fair, uh, we would have preferred not to um, not to not to uh, end up in pit lane. But um, <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> but no, no, I, I just, just meant that you've ended up with the invert pole for the third I know, race. I know. I was I was pushing I was pushing very hard that race to try and get that tenth spot because it sort of I knew that it would, it would sort of rely on it, and if I could get right up the front, it would be. Um, it could potentially be a, a more simple uh, race for that feature. So yeah, it did get rigged in my favour, which is which is nice at so it's dead. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was fun out there. I'm not not sure about the full reverse grid. I'm glad it wasn't too much bigger of a grid. It's it's pretty pretty hard work to, to get through without um, without incident. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, what did it look like from the uh, broadcast? Um, oh, look, it was it was entertaining. Um, the parts of it were a little bit processional, but that comes with the grid size, and unfortunately it whistled as the, the night went on. Um, we want to talk about your acrobatic work, actually, um, mm. because the fact that you were able to fly and not flip um, probably saved you. Yeah, yeah, I guess so, because uh, the car still sort of worked. It was, the steering was a bit, bit bent, so I could get back to pit lane okay, um, which was handy. But yeah, no, it was, um, oh, no, I am a former gymnast, so uh, maybe maybe that came into, uh, maybe that came into a home, a bit of vault work. Um, but yeah, it just sort of flinged me right up and uh, didn't, yeah, I don't know what happened there, it just didn't seem to move. It was like, you know, one of those old school games where the cars just yeah. don't, um, don't turn over. Let's be perfectly honest. Um, it was not the best rejoin I've ever seen. Um, so I'm sure race control will probably have a look at that. But in saying that, no harm, no foul, because as far as the round's concerned, um, a good haul of points despite that setback. Yeah, it was. Um, it was, I threw away zero X's in both the first and last race, unfortunately, but otherwise it's a good haul. Uh, um, given, you know, it could have been could have been a lot worse after that, so I can't complain too much. And you know, it was, and, and that's that is the thing about full first grid as well. You know, would I go in between where that car is rejoined and the car on the outside? Even though I have, you know, a good overspeed, you know, would I do that nearly? Maybe not. But when you've got to make up 20 conditions, you, you sort of go, okay, well, I'm allowed to do it, and I guess I'm going to have to take that risk and just to pay off at that point. Indeed, indeed. Um, Daniel, are we in a position to have a look at the calendar for the season ahead for these guys? Are we able to do that and just show everybody what Chapo's come up with? Um, all right, Chapo, explain this, uh, please. There are a couple of circuits there that I am particularly looking forward to. I reckon uh, Snettenden, Algarve, and also Circuit Gilles Villanova will be brilliant for these, for these particular cars. Um, you are going to have to explain, however, um, what the Johnson Club is at Sebring. Yeah, so Johnson Club, it's the, what is it, it's the second sort of half of Sebring and then it, then it cuts off. So you don't just have, it, Sebring would be a bit long for, for these, you know, with that big long straight up the back and that sort of thing, it sort of gets a bit ridiculous, a bit more like, you know, a bit like Le Mans was really, um, to some True. extent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, so this sort of allows you to do Sebring, which will be, you know, like it will still be very tricky with the sort of curves they have there and, and, and how rough it is and all that sort of thing. And there's still plenty of overtaking opportunity, but um, yeah, it just takes out that sort of enormous aspect. Um, VIR as well is a short config. Um, the first part of the track, I'll, I'll just have to check which one it was. And um, so that, that should be, Good. I mean, the, the, once again, it's, I've gone for slightly tighter circuits this season. I think we sort of went a bit too far with the um, streaming circuits last season, and it just sort of no. just gets gets out of hand a bit, little bit. So we put a few tighter ones, but then you've still got your. Yeah, yeah. They should all still have enough for um, good racing. 
No, very nicely done. Um, so next week, Osterslöben in Germany, um, a, a circuit that's synonymous with uh, DTM racing, uh, World Superbikes as well over the years. Uh, then on to Donington National, another famous BTCC venue. Algarve, the newest venue on the server. That'll be the full circuit there. They, they only have one configuration, do they? I assume so. I haven't bought the track, so... Oh, uh, I'm, I'm, I've, I've I mean, you can't set the calendar it, without buying the circuit, surely. Well, I, I, I haven't stepped up the server yet, so you could, I can. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I looked you at the video of the lap and went, yeah, that looks good. We'll give that a crack. Um, Why not? Sonoma, I, don't think, oh, I might have driven a lap or two as well, but I think that will be the interesting one. Um, <laughs> she went to just with all the other mates she has to win. Yeah, Sonoma will be a beauty, no doubt about that. Um, Snetterton, of course, in round six. Um, then on to Virginia. We, know, we we always like a trip to Virginia. Um, and then, of course, Circuit Gilles Villeneuve, Sebring, and uh, TBA to finish us off. Now, what's the vote going to be there? Are we going to go oval racing? Are we going to go to an iconic circuit? Are we going to go to Nordschleifer? So it's TBA, because I haven't been able to decide yet. Well, I, I oh, just, right. I, I can't quite come up with what we're going to do. We've done Phillip Island the last two times, and um, it is brilliant. Um, but I do think it could be due for a change. I just don't know what that change would be yet. It might be one where we put up for a vote. Uh, um, but yeah, I'm just sort of well, I'm having a think about it. So. Uh, Tony Baker's already put his vote in. Oh, okay. um, there it is, right on, but, uh, uh, on the right of the screen there. Mm, yeah. I don't there know about that. I don't, don't um, want to go. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking most of the trouble with Greg. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, look, look, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Phillip Island. Sand down even um, fits the bill. Um, uh, yeah, uh, there's a couple of ideas from me. Um, anyway, Chapo, are you jumping in for Super Formula Light or not? Yeah, and I'm just jumping in now. I've heard it's raining, so um, yeah, please send hopes and prayers. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, that's that's probably an opportune moment before we have a chat to Cedo, um, who's uh, Cedo was gracious with his presence in the booth. How rare is this? Um, we'll have a chat to Cedo in just a moment. Joe Baldwin's back as well. Um, uh, for those of you, you uh, Chabo just prompted me, and I wanted to mention it anyway um, because we saw the comment from Greg Padgett earlier um, on the subject of thoughts and prayers. Can we just again send all of our love to uh, the family of Brendan Van Ryn? Um, the reason Greg Padgett's in Singleton is because they're farewelling him there tomorrow. We shared the details regarding uh, that service the other night. I know it'll be readily available through club platforms and servers, the information on how you can tune in if you're not able to attend like Greg is. Um, it is being streamed. So we send our love to the Van Ryn family and all of Brendan's uh, um, immediate family and friends that are doing it rather uh, tough at this point in time, not least his GSRC teammates as well. Um, Cedo, nice to have you back. Um, someone had to come in and pick up the freight in the absence of John Merritt, and uh, you did it just beautifully. Yeah, I normally leave the PR up to a uh, hot lap, but seeing that he's not <laughs> here, I got pretty much forced into coming in, but that's all good. It's always good to have a chat with you boys. I take it you and Luke Turner decided who was going to draw the short straw, did you? Uh, he did a runner real, real quick, actually. Yes, yeah. Uh, I don't doubt that after blowing the thing up. Um, but now, um, not a bad night for your stable, really. I mean, um, pretty good performance from you in, in race one. Um, the, the fight back in race two was good. I mean, just talk me through that, because that was probably the more difficult of the three races with that invert of the entire field, a full reverse grid. We haven't done that for a while. Yeah, I reckon it was awesome. Uh, just mixes it up, gives some other dudes a bit of a chance to have a run, it and just, you know, I guess it um, also shows people's race craft as well, you know, working their way through safely, if you can. Uh, and also you need a bit of luck, obviously. Well, that's exactly right. And thankfully, uh, in a couple of those instances, you were in right place at right time. Same couldn't be said for a couple of your teammates, though. Um, <laughs> Brendan Nealon was in the wards there once or twice. Um, but um, what we what we did notice is that um, uh, Tony uh, Baker's gone a little bit rogue on you blokes and is starting to run. Is this a is this a, a retro uh, pulse livery or is this the livery of the future that he's running at the moment, please? Well, we keep saying he's black from the waist down, but uh, no. we reckon he's black from the waist up. So, um, no, no, I think it's his Kiwi uh, heritage showing through with the uh, black yep. livery. So, 
he's sort of gone a bit that way, which, uh, no, that's all right, still looks good. You know, I, I keep telling him yellow is faster yeah. though, so, you know. I agree with you in every sense of the word. Um, now, uh, uh, it's interesting that we talk about uh, New Zealand because that is the uh, centre point of Australasian motorsport this weekend. And, and I know friends that have made the trip over from Australia just to be involved or just to spectate. So um, uh, we wish everybody there at, uh, in Taupo the, uh, the very best of luck over the course of the next three days. Um, now, um, how often are we going to see you in, uh, in the Vs on a Thursday night? And what else are you going to apply your trade at when time permits throughout the season, mate? Oh, I guess if I have nights like tonight, I might come back a bit more often. It was actually a pretty good night all around. Pole position was good. I haven't had one of those in a while. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll see. I'll try and get on as much as I can. The Vs are always good fun because you can just jump on. Like, there's no real practice, you know, required. Yeah. Um, GD4s, I enjoy them. I had a bit, a bit of a rough run uh, last night. But, yeah, they're a bit of fun. So, yeah, I don't know. Look, same as usual. I'll just jump on when I can. So, I managed to make it back from the AKC round at Pucker today, just in time. So, that worked out all right. I uh, thought I might have got stuck there. But anyway, it all worked out well. Now, uh, you've just led me into that. Um, obviously, we've, we've been rattling off everything that's coming up this weekend on the um, the national stage and the international stage. But yes, uh, a lot of a, a strong contingent from Queensland, no doubt New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia, they've all made their way to Pucker, mate. Um, uh, how are you involved? Are you racing or are you just uh, on, the, on the tools? Uh, tell us a little bit about how today went and, and what you're most excited about about the next three days. Yeah, I think I'm a bit old for uh, for that these days, for AKC. Uh, <laughs> no, just spinning some spanners, helping a couple of people out. Um, and, yeah, I mean, Pucker, you know, the centre of the karting universe as far as I'm concerned. It's an awesome facility. I am a bit biased being my home track, but, yeah, it's massive. 400-plus entries. Extraordinary. Um, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. So, I'm, I'm assuming it'll be a lot better than the great race, well, which is really, really good. Red, 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 red. first two rounds of practice today the times is super close like it's so competitive um, so I'd expect some really really close racing and a lot of action around pucker being a fast flowing track a lot of slipstreaming it's hard to get away indeed it is um, all right mate very nicely done um, where is the big boss tonight I think he had a dinner date or oh. something well, I don't know. So, so Kurt Nelmanson uh, ditched us because uh, dinner arrived on the table, and and Merritt's ditched us for an actual dinner date. Well, there well, it's some sort of dinner engagement. I'm not sure what it was, but yeah. I'm assuming it's something he couldn't get out of because he loves the beast. All right, very nice. So he left us, um, left us hanging. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, with a little bit of on-air advice for our uh, audio director, Daniel Correa, so who will address that in just a moment. Hey, uh, Cito, very nice to have you on board, mate. Good luck at uh, Parker throughout the course of the weekend. Uh, we wish everybody there the best of luck at uh, one of the great venues in Australian karting. Um, well done tonight. Um, not a bad uh, effort for the stable. And I'm now hearing myself in my earphones, so it's about to get very distracting here. Um, looking forward to seeing what you guys bring to the table for the rest of the season, mate. Go well. Yeah, thanks, mate. Always enjoy the Vs. They're good fun. So I'll be back next week, no doubt. He, he, he was one of the lucky ones in uh, race three there. Adam Lavers had to fight his way through the field, only got towards the top three right towards the end. But very early in the piece, Chapman and Cito had very clear air and cashed in on it, made the most of it. Uh, there he is, Glenn Cito. Uh, well done. Pulse tuning uh, Echuca Toyota on top um, in the opening race of the night. And then, of course, uh, in the second race there, it was Hendo and the third race, Chapo. So uh, three different winners to start the night. And we go from the little bull ring that is Knock Hill in Scotland now on the other side of the break to the Temple of Speed for the second time this week. The Monza circuit in Italy. Super Formula Lights are next. And whether we'll have 
wet weather for the race on the back of a wet qualifying remains to be seen. This is the platforms of the Gentleman Sim Racing Club. Straight inside a Thursday night motorsport. Not only are we going to up the intensity and the speed, but also the grid size on the other side of this short break. Hope you can stay with us.
Leg two of the opening Thursday night motorsport doubleheader for you on the platforms of the Gentleman Sim Racing Club for term two of 2024. Night four, week one. And we take you from Knock Hill in Scotland over a little bit further into Europe to the Temple of Speed, where we were on Monday night for our main course. It's dessert on a Thursday night. It's the opening round of the Sprite Insider Super Formula Light for the new te- uh, the new campaign. And, and what a campaign it promises to be if the interest in this opening round is anything to go by as to what we can expect in terms of grid size for the rest of the season. Currently, we have had no less than 41 cars take to the circuit at some point during this qualifying session. We wait to see exactly how many will line up on the grid. There are seven drivers yet to set a time here. What's interesting is, as we welcome you to uh, the continuation of Sprite Insider Wings and Slick Super Formula Lights Thursday Night Motorsport, um, it is uh, an open wheel double header for you. So we talk about uh, in the past we've had things like One Make Wednesday or uh, you know uh, One Make Thursday or um, whatever we want to uh, refer to it as. Tonight we can refer to this and we can do it all season long as open wheel night on the platforms of the Gentleman Sim Racing Club. There's the circuit, five and three quarter kilometres. Um, 90 degrees the uh, ambient at the moment. The track temp is 18. It's still wet out there after a wet practice. Um, the track's slowly drying. The rain has stopped. The track is drying. So it'll be interesting to see what we're greeted with with regards to the track conditions at the start of the race itself uh, showing us 10:14 eastern uh, european daylight time there in the morning on april 20 2024 and we are ready to rock and roll um i'm zach caven daniel career stars here alongside me that is jackson ray harner off the road at the parabolica at the final corner um uh, daniel i haven't seen too much of these uh, super formula light uh, characters but by g this promises to be fascinating for a number of different reasons. One, the field size. B, the carnage that we saw in GTs here on uh, Monday night, particularly getting through the first corner. That's going to be hairy. Just add water. That adds spice to it. And fourth and foremost, I guess, if it does dry out as it is anticipated and expected to do so, the guys that don't necessarily like the rain that will thrive in the dry and make their way through the field, we could be in for some real fireworks here. Yeah, you're exactly right there, Zach. Um, I mean, look, the Super Formula Lights are a fantastic, fantastic addition to the iRacing service. They feel... I don't really know how to describe them, but they just they just feel like such a great driver's car. Um, and do as we see someone at the back Boy. there just spinning. Uh, case in point, perfect driver's car, like I said. Um, but... <laughs> We're talking about Monza, right? So we, we know Monza more more so from the Formula One calendar than any other. Obviously, there are endurance races and, uh, yeah. and sports yeah. car races there. But Monza is known as the Temple of Speed. There isn't many corners. There's lots of straights. And the corners that there are tend to be long sweepers. But now it's gone and rained. And uh, it's not raining currently, but the track is drying. It's still considered a wet session. Everybody is on wet tyres. You can see just how much spray is coming off the back of Aiden Lathwaite's car there. Um, so, yes, as you say, it will throw a wrench in the works. Some people may not have had enough wet practice as they have in the dry. And the way that iRacing has implemented wet racing, uh, it will definitely test everyone's ability my worry here is with such a massive grid we all know what monza turn one's like so i'm very curious to see if we get through this scot free or yeah indeed um now um geez we've got some interesting comments coming in there haven't we um Well, that's a good point from Josh. You know, the difference between wet and dry with these things is by far the biggest out of the categories that we have that are eligible to race in the rain on the server at the moment. Um, so make a note of that. Let me go around the grounds for you very, very quickly and remind everybody of where we're at and what we're doing. Um, tonight, the uh, St Kilda and Western Bulldogs matches at halftime in the AFL Thursday night football. 
the Western Bulldogs leading by 49 points at the long break, 76 to 27. And in the NRL, half time between the mighty Melbourne Storm and the Sydney Roosters, the Storm with their nose in front of the moment, 12 points to six. We saw three different winners in straight inside the Formula V. Let's see what this 40 minute race for Super Formula dishes up. And as you can see there, it is bone dry on that racetrack as we line up on the grid. So we go from a, a, a wet circuit to a dry course for the next 40 minutes. And that will make things rather interesting. Aiden Luthwaite's taken pole position here. Pipped Jackson Ray Hunter by six tenths of a second. Trent Allen and uh, Fred Khan from the second row. Oscar Haynes, Richard King, the third row. Jackson Dial and Jack Humphreys from the fourth row. David Bass and Brett Barker from row five. From row six, it's Jamie Welch and Cam Culverwell. Row seven, Matt Schmitke, Adam Lavis, row eight, Liam Banks and Paul Wilson, row nine, Guy Leach, Mark uh, McNamara, and then Julia Mookie and David Christensen from row 10. Josh Robertson's on the 11th row alongside John Baldwin. Dale, uh, Dale Jeffries is alongside Greg Heaney on the 12th. Brett Bradbury, Daniel Piper, Sam Chapman, Eduardo Zamora, Paul Wood, and Chris Stark take us back to 30th position on the grid. Outside the top 30, row 16, Jacob uh, Vickery and Justin Cotter, row 17, Liam Amos and John Simpson, row 18, Tim Watson and Elio Miro. Bella, row 19, Pete Matson, Andrew Neal, row 20, Michael Ladder and Wayne Vizza. Row 21 is Kurt Nomanson, uh, fresh off the dinner table. And very nicely done. All right, we're ready to rock and roll. Have a look at the size of that grid, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to have to be patient. On the run to turn one, I would suspect. Tim Watson's the only one yet to line up thus far. Will he take his place on the grid or will we start without him? We wait to find out. What a sight that is. We we're hoping for some wet weather. We haven't got it. It's dry at Monza for the opening round of Super Formula Light on the platforms of the Gentleman Sim Racing Club. Good evening to you, Greg Brooks. Don't worry, I did take a breath, mate. There won't be too much time to do that over the next 40 minutes, though. Ready to fire a brand new season for us on the platforms of the Gentleman Sim Racing Club as Tim Watson opts to launch from pit lane. The rest of the field get away nicely and fan out from left to right. Four or five wide in parts as they stretch their legs down towards the first corner. It's a beautiful start from Trent Allen, who got up on the inside of Aiden Luthwaite. Jackson Ray Hanna gets up on the inside of him to take the lead to turn one. It's snail's pace. We're at crawling oh, pace. There we oh, go. No. Car park at the first corner. Now, will they throw the caution flag or will they let this fly? They threw the caution flag the other night when it became log jammed down there at Turn 1. We wait to find out what Joe Baldwin and crew in race control decide to do. They let it go green for the moment. Ray Hanna and Allen side by side on the run through the back of the circuit for the first time. Ray Hanna holds sway. Down the back straight. How good's open wheel racing on a Thursday night? Now, will there be a splash and dash requirement here, Daniel? I would assume so. Uh, I'm not too sure. <laughs> Generally, formula classes Ooh. like this don't do refueling anymore, but most likely, be it uh, with it being iRacing, uh, I think that maybe they will have to do that, yes. Have a look at some of the throwback liveries. Iconic in parts, some of them here as well. Jack Humphrey's wearing the Red Bull livery tonight. And Aiden Luthwaite has lost eight positions on this opening lap. The youngster has just been hustled and bustled out of it. Round they come onto the main straight. Humphreys and Haynes side by side. Haynes with his nose in front. And the slipstreaming, the drafting, the dicing around here will be next level. Down the main straight. Trent Allen's got his nose in front, but Ray Hunter's got the racing line when they get down to the corner. Ray Hunter oh, is not gone. Come on, gone. Jeez, that's unlucky. Trent Allen and Oscar Haynes. Haynes plummets down the order. Let's have a look at it again. Haynes locked it up, got into Allen. Ray Hunter lucky not to get caught up in it. Probably the Blinky Bill moment helped him. Oh, it's another log jam there, it seems. Oh, one upside down. We've got more trouble at turn one. Upside down, Fred Kahn and Greg Heaney. It's Kahn that's on his lid. The two teammates are in the gravel. 
And Khan is now on the tow rope. Now... Oh, are you kidding me? Fred Khan's just being wiped out of it. And, and, and actually, credit 10 points to iRacing. Um, and apologies if you're uh, reading the subtitles there on the right-hand side of your screen um, from the comments section. And I've just lost your feet there, uh, Daniel Creasar. So all I'm seeing at the moment is... Um, now, there we go. That's better. Yeah, there were so <laughs> many cars... <laughs> that it broke the replay system oh, no. and it stuck. Yeah. Uh, I was just seeing comments, totem poles and sponsor billboards and graphics. I was not seeing anything else. Um, now, what's interesting here is, is that they've let this run. They've let this stay green. They haven't opted to throw the caution, despite the fact that we've already got Fred Kahn, Liam Banks, Daniel Piper in pit lane, Wayne Visa, Eduardo Zamora, Liam Amos, Chris Stark, Justin Cotter, Paul Wood and Brett Bradbury have also been to pit lane at one point or another and John Simpson's now on his way there. So to Trent Allen, Mark McNamara and Jacob Vickery. I mean, you could almost rattle off the names on the list of those that haven't yet stopped. Move for the lead and it'll be just as long as those that have already transited the lane. Okay. Um, True they come. Jack Humphreys, Jackson Ray Hanna, Jody Welch, one, two, and three. Humphreys has managed to get himself to the lead. But is there a case to answer with all the kerfuffle that went on earlier in the piece? I think these two managed to stay out of it, but race control will have to have a look at it, no doubt, because there were four cars going into that corner. Ray Hanna might be a little bit concerned about his blinky bill movement two so keep an eye on that and jack humphreys jackson ray harner have built a sizable advantage over jamie welch jackson dial david baz brett barker and then adam lavis in seventh spot biggest movers thus far have a look at this general career sir 14th place andrew neal up 24 spots already and michael ladder up 22 spots already from 39th on the grid to 17th are you kidding me kurt nomanson up 21 from 41st to 20th just curious here, Zach. You mind having a look at who's the biggest loser? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, Aiden Luthwait down 34 and Fred Kahn down 37. Yeah, Luthwait started on pole. Yeah, yeah. And, all and the has way already down to 35th. Yeah. That's a rough one. That is a rough one. Jeez. Um, good evening to you, uh, Greg Brooks. Uh, nice to see somebody playing fair in the, uh, the comment section tonight. 34 minutes to go. Um, 1 minute 43.313. Fast love of the race thus far for Humphreys. We're watching John Simpson live at the moment. Uh, flash graphics fame on the outside. Losing out there, actually. But only momentarily. Getting the position back on the inside. So Simpson into the 24th ahead of Trent Allen. And Sam Chapman to pit lane and out again. So, again, quite seriously... You could almost take uh, the names of those that have pitted and stack them up alongside the names of those that haven't, and the list would be just as long on either side. Top uh, 16 yet to stop. The first two have stopped is Tim Watson, but he started from pit lane, and didn't that turn out to be a blessing in disguise for him? Uh, he's up 18 spots up where he was scheduled to start um, and running in 17th at the moment. Beyond that, Paul Wood has stopped. Everybody else below Paul Wood, except for Elio Mirabella, have come to the pit lane. Jacob Vickery's still there. Everybody is still racing in some way, shape or form. And Joe Baldwin, unfortunately, <laughs> finds his way through the kid litter and grass. John, oh, sorry, John, John Baldwin, Baldwin, my apologies. Yeah. Um, getting the ball wouldn't speak up now. There's that many people out there. Um, Joe's in race control, of course. So, uh, um, yeah. Jacob Vickery's two laps down, but still in the server. He hasn't opted out of it yet. Um, pit Lane does have a couple of um, notable um, arrivals there at the moment. Um, 
And unfortunately, I've just lost all that pit stop information and data, ladies and gentlemen. It's just wiped off Daniel's timing screen. So I'm up the creek without a paddle now as well. Oh, jeez. All right. So keep your eyes peeled on all of this, ladies and gentlemen. It's one hell of a night um, to be tuning into the platforms of the Gentleman Sim Racing Club. 41 starters here. Still 41 running. Hey, Jacob Vickery getting back out onto the racetrack now. So there are already some cars a lap down. We need to stress that. Race Control have let this run, so they didn't want to throw the caution, and that's probably not a bad thing because the more you bunch them up, the more, um, the more drama you can expect and the more incidents, etc., and so forth. Safety cars breed safety cars, all that sort of caper. And there on the outside is Brett Barker, very nicely done around the outside of Jackson Dial. Onto the main straight we go. And uh, we are at eight minutes and 50 seconds into this race. Whoa, look at the defense work going on there. Barker back down the inside. Dial on the outside. Barker inside line goes to P6. Sorry, loses out to uh, P5, I should say. So Dial keeps his nose in front. Barker still rots back into sixth position. Then Adam Lavis, Josh Robertson, Richard King and Cam Culverwell make up the top 10. 40 minutes the distance here. So very similar format in terms of what we're doing with Super Formula as what we did with um, the Porsche Cup that was in this time slot last season. There'll be a mix of sprint races, 15 and 25 minute heats and 40 minute uh, um, affairs, if you like, um, throughout the course of the campaign. So whether it's one race or two, we'll have plenty of excitement for open wheel fans on a Thursday night here, right throughout the course of the next 10 weeks. And we're excited about that. <coughs> So all the gaps have really expanded. Now we're 10 minutes in, and uh, I mean, it's it's an effort, me trying to keep on top of this timing tower. But yeah, there's a couple of battles happening at the front. You're watching the one that's essentially the closest is actually Oscar Haynes just over to Guy Leach there. And Jackson Dial is going to try and go up on the outside of the Alberetto curve. I, I keep having to check myself because ah. I call it the Parabolica a lot, but it is now the Alberetto yeah, that's, curve. Yep, yep. Michaeli Alberetto, of course who uh, passed away uh, only in the last few years. Um, Liam Banks, first retirement of the night. Our commentary colleague, uh, your Wednesday night colleague, has parked up. He's the first retirement of the night. This might explain how it happened. Oh, technical the dream coat. Uh-oh. Well. Yeah, I think Banksy might have just... <laughs> had a gut fall by that point, had enough. <laughs> there's nothing in there that screams right off or, no. or wrecked car. No. no. I, I would have just been easier to opt out of it. I would have paid good money if he had managed to just rest himself on that sausage curve. <laughs> and then the tyres had no grip and he's just there spinning. That would, oh my god, if that's actually possible, that would that'd make my day. Yeah. That, oh dear. All right. Brilliant stuff. Have a look at this three wide on the run down to turn one. Paul Wood on the inside. Goes deep. Holds 17th for the moment. Single line formation through there. Is that a... The, the green and uh, gold, is that a throwback to Benetton? Or is I that a, say... a, or is that a, or is that a, Or is that inspired by the Porsche livery at the 12 hour this year? Yeah, I don't know. That, I, I... Oh, it's in the grass almost. I wanted to say it was the Bennett. Someone's actually running a more accurate um, depiction of of that Benetton um, from the from the Michael Schumacher's debut year, yeah, talking they, 1992, 1993. That's yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So I I can't remember who it was that I saw that had it because it um, it had the liveries on there as well. Um, if I ever if I can catch on it. I'll try and yep. switch to it so we can have a oh, better look at it. So, yeah, I'm not sure mate, if that's... There's a thousand of them out there. Good that's luck. the problem, yeah. It's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
It's not like earlier where <laughs> everyone in Formula V ah. got some screen time. No, no. no. Oh, I do know who um, it was. It is yep. our very own Brett Bradbury. There we go. See? So, there we go. Oh, he's yep. missing the wing. Um, that's, ah, that's yeah, going to be a that's, problem. That's, yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's that 1991 vintage of the, uh, the Benetton. Um, or that can't that be a, fun to turn. No, 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 that, not at all. Um, uh, yeah, I think... Yeah, the, the, the one I'm thinking of is um, distinctly green and, and uh, not a not quite a distinct canary gold yellow. Canary, uh, you know, Aussie yellow. Um, it's more a, a mix between yellow and orange. Oh, oh Paul Wood locks it up and goes off the road. That is to Greg Heaney's advantage as he rolls on by. Um, some good throwback liveries out there. 1.23, the advantage at the top of the field. Jackson Rayhana over Jack Humphreys. Um, for everybody playing along at home, Greg Brooks included, uh, because he was the one that insisted I draw breath whilst reading through the grid there earlier. Um, it uh, only took about 10 minutes into the race for me to do so. Pete Matson in 18th at the moment. Thank goodness for Daniel Correa-Sar and his ability to pick it up and, and roll with it when I do need a breath. Um, 14 minutes gone, 26 minutes to go. That's come and gone very quickly, hasn't it? Ray Hanna leads Humphreys. Welch, good to see Jamie Welch back on the server. Um, David Baz, Jackson Dial, Adam Lavis. And now, have a look at this. Pete Matson under pressure here. Paul Wood up on the outside. Trent Allen's just got by Greg Heaney as well. There are still oh. a few cars. Wood right around the outside of Matson at the Ascari. Oh, very nice. Matson will look to fight back. The slipstream here is immense, isn't it? Yeah, you can only do so much with it. Yeah. He couldn't dive down the inside. Now, he, he backed off, and I think he backed off on purpose because he knows it wasn't ideal and that the Monza main straight is quite long, except he really did back off the speed there. So now he's going to be in attack range of Watson behind. So this could uh, go pear-shaped for Matto here. I don't think he's got enough distance to uh, to make that inside dive. So yeah, he'll probably have to just stay in line there. Someone coming out of the pits now. I'm not sure who that is. They're slowing down appropriately though, making sure they don't get in the way there. Actually, I'll tell you what, Matto made all that gap in the braking zone alone. Well done. So in behind them, of course, is Tim Watson and John Simpson. And it's Watto that's running the livery that's caught our attention at the moment. In the meantime, um, Elio Mirabella's made uh, his way in the pit lane. Um, the retirement list now stands at two. Um, and it seems to be the common denominator is your name's got to be Liam. Because it's Liam Amos that's joined Liam Banks parked up and done for the night. Just to add insult to injury to Banksy, unfortunately. Oh, this one's um, going to get spicy here. Oh, they managed to get past. That's okay. Yeah, I thought uh, very might. nicely done. For Sharp EIT, Josh Robertson. Down into seventh place now. Getting by Richard King. Took Julian Mookie with him. And David Christensen as well. Um, but yeah, that does not look like a, uh, a fun time at all. For um, Brett. Is it uh, Brett Bradbury? Yeah in car number 65 with that front wing well and truly gone parted company with the car um first uh, I, I i must admit daniel full disclosure to the uh, to the audience at home he's pete matson and uh and tim watson duking it out what up the outside matson with the line matson holding sway this is my um, initiation into this form of racing. I hadn't seen Super Formula. I mean, obviously, we had them last season on a Friday night. We know that uh, Nick Fodiatis, Joe Baldwin, those guys rocking and rolling there. Um, here is uh, John Baldwin. Oh, no. Getting into the side of one of the whiskey business entries. Fred um, Khan. Uh, well, Fred's... Fred's had more than his fair share of woes tonight already. Um, that's that's the least of the incidents that he's had at Turn 1 and 2. Um, but um, 
what are your initial impressions of, of this as i say it's it's my initiation into the format even though we've had them on our servers internally for a little while it's the first time we've had the the, uh, the privilege of broadcasting them yeah well look uh, as i alluded to the they're a great formula um they're really really fun to drive uh they're a really good starters car it doesn't sound like it but they they just have so much grip oh as someone just spun off there i think oh, that was oh that's watson watson that's yeah. watson that um, green and gold stand out anyway yeah so that's uh, they're they're a great starters car um they they're obviously they're obviously faster than the the formula 3.5 um, I can't remember where in the, the hierarchy it sits because from my memory, Formula One is obviously the pinnacle. I believe Super Formula is below that. And then I yep. think, I think it goes F2, Super Formula Light. I could be wrong there. Um, but yeah, these have enough power. They're not crazy powerful. They're fast, obviously. Uh, but if you think about it, this is Monza where you're expecting like a one... I think a Formula One car is like 110 around here, 114, yep. something like that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah uh, somewhere between 115 and 120. Yeah. 120, yeah, yeah right. Um, yep. So, yeah, if you have a look, 142, you know, it's slower on that scale, but 142 is still rapid around here. So, Ooh. Can we uh, get a shot of pit lane, please, my friend? Rather busy at the moment. Ray Hanna, Humphreys, Welch, Baz, the top four, all on pit road. So this is obviously that critical lap, midway point of the race, 19 minutes uh, down, 19 and a half gone, and uh, pit lane is a flurry of activity. Adam Lavis continues on, Jack Humphreys, Jamie Welch, David Baz, Jackson Dial, Josh Robertson, Richard King, Julian Mookie, and Oski Haynes. Oscar Haynes, all the top 10 essentially, with the exception of Adam Lavis, to pit lane at the end of lap 11. So that gives an indication that we're we're going somewhere in the vicinity of 22, 23 laps. I haven't even got the, the calculator, calculator out to punch those numbers yet, ladies and gentlemen. But considering, you know, 11 laps inside uh, 20 minutes, that gives me the uh, indication that we'll get 22, possibly 23 in here. And uh, I think we're all surprised that we didn't get a safety car on the opening lap. Uh, yeah. Jack Humphreys is running third place at the moment. But again, Adam Lavis is yet to stop. Andrew Neal, Paul Wood, Pete Matson all add their name to the pitters list on the opening lap. Uh, sorry, on this 11th lap. And I guess the other point as we enter lap 12 that we've got to take into consideration, Daniel, is anyone that pitted on lap one and two with damage and the like, how uh, compromised are they going to be? Will they have another invoice to pay? Will they need to come and top up the tank again before the chequered flag flies? Yeah, I, I'm not actually sure of those, of those parameters. This will obviously give us good insight into the following rounds throughout the rest of the season. Um, I, will, I will say this. Uh, as far as incidents go... It's fairly few for the amount of cards we had. Obviously, we had log jams. We had two log jams. We had the one that started right at the uh, the beginning of the race of turn one, and then another one a couple of laps later at the same point. But everyone has, seems to have gotten into their groove. Unfortunately, the gaps really have extended out at the front. You have to go all the way down to P7 before you're seeing someone who's actually in attack range of another driver for position on track of course there are a bunch of people coming into the pits you can see that bottom bar on your screen that is the pit stop bar and you can see that it's completely populated with adam lavis and uh Visser, as well as that is uh Nominson and stark so yeah lavis now coming out of the pit lane he will most likely join i'd say just behind mookie I've got that right. No, it looks like Haynes has got him. Yeah, so he'll join in 10th uh, place there. A good job there from Lavis. We'll see if they can go to the end. I'm not too sure on that one, but time will tell. Uh, otherwise, Jackson killing it right now. 4.8 seconds down the road. And Humphreys himself has a 5.9 second gap to Welsh in P3. Just getting a, a message from Next Gen Racer, the great Max Gagan, uh, uh, messaging me with regards to motorsport-related matters. Uh, absolutely tore it to shreds in the Toyota 86 Scholarship Series opener at Sydney Motorsport Park last weekend. So we say well done to Max 
on that. In the meantime, uh, we're riding on board with Julia Mookie. Whenever there's open wheel racing, the Sharpie IT boys return in, in uh, numbers, don't they? Robertson and Mookie both running inside the top 10 at the moment. Both sitting pretty. Ray Harner, the leader. Humphrey second. Welch, Baz, King, the top five. The biggest movers so far include Josh Robertson, 14 spots gained. Julian Mookie, 10. 12 for Sam Chapman. 18 for John Simpson. 20 for Andrew Neal. 10 Ooh. for Paul Woods. 17 for Pete Matson, And 17 for Michael Latter as well. Um, 10 for Tim Watson. And 10 for Wayne Visser. So, some big movers tonight. There's Cam Culverwell going down on the inside of Julia Mookie. Moving up into ninth place. Ooh. Here's Robertson and Dial. Yeah, I'm just going to tuck back in. They've got a... Uh... Actually, no, sorry. I thought I, I, I read that wrong. I thought that was McNamara ahead of him, but no, that's Richard King. So this is all for position. That's fifth, sixth, and seventh there on the screen right now. And uh, Richard King doing a great job. Robert's at 15 positions up. I didn't notice that the first time. So he's done really, really well from the start of this race. And, uh, and Jackson's actually exactly where he started, P7. So <laughs> decent evolution for him. Uh, 23, we're at the 24 minute mark. So we're winding down towards the, uh, the tail end of the race here. And it's times like these I really do wish we were able to see fuel numbers. Just to times get a bit like of insight. Are, but... it, it only took, it only took a, you know, an hour and 50 minutes. But the Foo Fighters reference in Thursday Night Motorsport. Very nicely done from you, Daniel Perea, sir. I, I didn't mean it, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it happened. <laughs> Oh dear! Um, as soon as as soon as said times like these, I was like one way motorway. Very nicely done. Um, Brett Barker in thirteenth place. Um, riding on board with him now, and there are quite see that, that's the good thing as well. That despite the field being you know pretty much divided, split and spread in the opening two laps, there is still uh, one, two, three, four. Five active battles, six active battles on the racetrack at the moment, which is really good to see. The hottest of them is right there. Adam Labus, 10th place. Julian Mookie, Brett Barker, David Christensen, 11th, 12th, and 13th. So you've got Aussie races flanking it, and you've got an AHR media entry in 12th and a Sharp EIT entry in 11th at the moment. We run on board with Christensen, trying to get down on the inside of Brett Barker to turn one. Can he have a look on the inside? Will he have a lunge? No, but Barker does. Barker goes deep. Oh, and he pulled Very it up nicely too. done. This place is Mookie. Great move. And Mookie will be under pressure from Christensen. Um, so still quite a few battles raging out there. The uh, field uh, whittling somewhat now. Elio Mirabella, Kurt Nominson, Aiden Luthwaite, Fred Kahn join the retirements list. Have been for a while. Christensen capitalises. Gets by Barker. Moves into... Sorry, gets by Mookie, I should say. Chases Barker. Oh, King and, off. Oh, Richard King off the road. Exit stage right. So Mookie gets 12th back all of a sudden. King drops to 13th. Lavis goes into 9th. Barker 10th. And Christensen now 11th. So Christensen, the big beneficiary out of that, gaining two spots. Yeah, he was patient. And it paid off. Uh, Rich King's taking a little bit too much right curb. Luckily for him, well, actually, he he took too much right curb, which caused him to go off towards the left, and then he spun because of the the gravel, um, which is which is fairly easy to do in a Formula car. That's the, that's the problem with with cars, cars like, like like these that rely on the downforce. They bait you into taking more and more curb because you feel like you're okay, and then you take too much. And then you're not okay. And then because of the nature of the car, you're going slower, which means you have no downforce, which means the car isn't pushed to the ground as much and you spin. And so yeah. it's yeah, it's just a, an endless tug of war with these cars. They, they feel the best when you've got them locked in, but boy, does it suck when you're done. Indeed it does. And, and there's Julian looking in 12th place right now trying to get his way back into the top 10. Richard King's had to come to pit lane. Splash dash and back out again in 14th. In the meantime, Cam Culverwell 
under pressure here. Gets by Jackson Dial and up into seventh. Dial and just yielded. Surrendered. Nice charge from Cam Culverwell. Um, Ray Hunter leads. Humphrey second, Welch third. Welch from 11th up to third. Baz is uh, there in fourth place, having gained five places throughout the night. Josh Robertson, the story of the night, up 16 spots from 21st to 5th. Hey, it pays to kick your nose clean and stay out of trouble in this caper in a field this big. Down the back straight we go. 16 laps gone, 12 minutes left on the clock. Ray Hunter's on the run home. Um, we suspect, uh, looking at the, the fact that we're getting uh, 1 minute 40, well, if, if we're going to say 1 minute 42 per lap, um, we're looking at 143.20 and 140 is 5. You're probably looking at 23 laps. You're probably looking at 23 laps, but did everybody that stopped on lap 11, are they going to be right to get home in a 12 lap stint? We'll soon find out. We'll soon learn. Jeez, look at the speed difference here from Brett Parker. Just shooting past. Adam Labus going down towards turn one here. Now, hopefully, he can apply the brake. Don't lock up those fronts. You don't want to go off. Well done. No. And it is a dry track. However, you can see in certain parts where the evidence of water because you can't no, fast right. forward yeah sorry you can't uh manipulate the the mm. the flow of time in a race enabled no. server so obviously you can start the session later which is what we saw we saw a wet qualifying and then it, it i think it was an hour and a half was the time difference between the end of yep. qualifying the start of the race and by then the nice italian hot sun has, has seemed to dry the track you can see where you've got that dark coloration there where the evidence of the water and uh and you will notice sometimes if they yes, run mate. too far on the curb you'll see water spray out because there's still water pooled yep. on the edges of those but uh which is no good for the slicks here no of course not uh, but luckily for these Ooh. guys they get respite for round one because i believe yes. that our club president joe baldwin who is also the the series yes. runner took pity on them and changed oh. the uh, changed the weather for at least the first race we saw i believe it was supposed to be 100 yep. percent wet uh which yep. yeah if you look if you're new to the series if you're new to rain in general that's it's it's not a fun that's, experience that's a tough so. initiation yeah. no, no. um baptism by fire hey uh, david baz has got by jamie welch david baz has got oh. by jamie welch that's the battle just picked up welch is trying to respond on the outside Welch trying to get up on the outside for the inside, running to the left-hander to get back by Baz to reclaim third. Baz hanging tough. That's a Welch low curve. gets on by. Oh, did well, Welch though. finds his way back into third. They were out of pursuit of Jack Humphreys, who's two seconds up the road. That's lap traffic immediately in front of them. Brett Barker's thrown it off the road and lost two spots. Lavis and Dial have gone on by him up into 10th now. Oh, back into 10th now goes Brett Barker. Lap traffic doing justifiably what they should be doing and getting out of the road. And David Baz trying to get as much of an advantage out of that as possible. The slipstream, the toe, to hang tough right under the clucker there of Jamie Welch. The run through Ascari on the run down to the Parabolic Cup. So it's Ray Hanna, it's Humphreys, 2.4 the margin. It's another 11 seconds back then to this battle. Oscar Haynes is fifth, but he's 22 seconds down the road. It's extraordinary. Welch goes deep, rides the ripple strips, rides the Astro turf on the exit of the corner. Baz is coming fast. Baz will have the run. Baz will try and get back down the inside and go back into third. Does so. This battle on in earnest at the moment. It's one of many raging around the racetrack, but this is for the final spot of the podium. Nicely done on the inside. Just uh, as they do sort that out, and Welch concedes, Baz moves up into third. Uh, can we just remind everybody of what the track temperature is now? Please, Daniel Correa, sir. Um, because we saw the temperature in the, as we said earlier, in the rain, um, the track will always most likely be cooler than the ambient because of the water on it at the moment as you can see there the ambient 20 degrees the track has warmed up significantly to 33 we're at 12 30 in the afternoon 
clock only going in in uh, you know single second formation, not moving twice as fast or anything like that. Daniel was explaining that earlier for us as well. Um, so that time sequence is in rhythm with our experience here. Um, there's nothing simulated about that um, as they make their way down towards, and and that's the that's the that's the one um, thing that does take away from the realism of it. Um, in terms of we don't have that um, when we do have those servers that transition quicker than they actually are. So two times or four times in the event of our six-hour races to give us the 24-hour uh, rhythm or cycle, um, we do see. Um, that is the one distinct difference between real world racing and sim racing. That is one distinct fabrication that separates it from that real experience, if you like, in a time manner. Um, you're just speeding everything up um, for the effect of it, not so much for any any other factor. Um, six and a half minutes to go. Ray Hunter, the leader. Jack Humphries has had to come to pit lane for the second time. And he'll now make his way back out onto the racetrack. Still running fourth at his advantage over the next few cars down the road is not as significant as it once was. So we're on lap 20 now. Um, keep, an, keep an eye on this as well, folks, because next time Ray Hunter gets by the line, it'll either be three or four laps. They may be able to sneak, sneak in a fourth. That would require some overtime. This is Mark McNamara just making a mockery of the setup at turn one there. But at least he's gone through the shortcut the right way rather than just bolt everything over. We've seen that done before. Um, so I want to keep an eye on Ray Hanna next time he comes round by the line because he's currently lapping in the 142.7s. So um, uh, anything beyond five minutes and nine seconds when he crosses the line yeah no he's gonna have plenty of time so um it's five minutes and oh no actually no he's not he's into pit lane ray Hanna is into pit lane so there's a story for you so there are some two stoppers out there there are some late splash and dashes happening that's going to throw 24 laps out the window. It is a 23-lap race. It is three laps from here. David Baz and Jamie Welch take the lead. But how long until they have to bite the bullet and come in? So all of a sudden, there's another new exciting element of intrigue to this Daniel Career Saar because it, it, it is very clear that when the leaders setting the pace have got to stop twice here, um, that the, the, the fuel numbers are that tight that there's only one lap, really. Uh, and that inability to go that 12 laps in that opening stint has somewhat forced their hand here. That's how tight it is between a one-stop race and a two-stop race. Does that oh, advantage Adam Lavis, though? Because Adam Lavis got 12 laps out of his opening stint. Yeah, well, Tom, like you said, this, there's only, what have we got, four minutes now um, to left on that clock. It's just going to tick over to 36 now, 36 and 40. Mm. Um, so we'll see if they would be having a fuel save. You can you can fuel save in Formula Cars uh, quite a lot. It, it depends on how much mm. of a draft. If you can stay in the draft uh, a lot, you just let the car ahead do all the work. Um, but uh, you can't clutch in for these cars. You can't save fuel uh, so much in that way. So... I'm curious to see how effective Lavis has managed to do it. Uh, Sam Chapman here just chasing down Andrew Neal, who of course is the biggest mover in the grand scheme of things, 22 positions gained from the start of that race. We'll just move up to um, Trent Allen and David Christensen here. This is the closest battle on track at the moment. Slight train. Britt Barker's also just catching up to the back here. Um, these four guys have been Swapping positions back and forth for a while now. And uh, again, it, 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 Monza just really highlights it. It, it. it tends to become a bit of a leapfrog scenario. If you're close enough, yep. one person overtakes yep. and they go into turn one and then maybe they'll get a run at the back one here coming into a, uh, into the Ascari chicane. Um, but it, for... For the amount of cars that we had starting this race, uh, there has at least yes. been battles 
occurring well, throughout the whole right. race. And important to note as well, we still have 33 cars out on the circuit. Still 33 cars out on the circuit. So that's more than 75% of the, of the field um, that started the race. Still Ooh. somewhat running. There goes Paul Wood at turn one. Um, Jacob Vickery's been on pit lane now for oh, the better part of seven and three quarter minutes. And Chris Stark has got back out there. But Stark is eight laps down. So the way I see it with this getting to 23 laps, and we're now on lap 22, um, oh, keep an eye Sam. out. No, oh, oh, dear, oh, dear. Chapa, 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 what have you done? Um, can we get to the main straight? David Baz coming round now. Onto the main straight. Is there a white flag in the air? No, Baz is on pit lane. Welch is on pit lane. Ray Hanna's going to come round. Is Ray Hanna going to see a white flag or is the fact that everybody's continued on and gone via pit lane, is that going to see us go? No, there's no white flag in no, Barney's no, arms. No. So I think now because of the fact that the leaders like Welch and Baz left it so long to pit, we're going to start the final lap after the clock has expired. So it's all of a sudden going to be clock plus one lap, not first time past the post after the clock expires. Oh, that's so I, I was technically right with the calculations, Daniel, but I'm going to be brought undone by the inconsistencies in of iRacing. <laughs> um, There's uh, always something. Those bastards. No, um, let's continue on here. Um, it's 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, three quarters of a minute to go. Ray Hanna, Humphreys. Humphreys the fastest lap of the race, 141.958. There are a few drivers not going to pit lane just yet. So they're hoping that they can get round. Do they realise that this is going to drag out to 24 laps? Can they get home without running out of fuel on the final lap? That is going to trip, uh, that is going to trip at least somebody up. I, I do think. I think there's going to be one or two people tripped up by this. So let's keep an eye out. Because next time by Ray Hanna will get the white flag. If I've done if if we're not seeing a white flag from Barney, we should be seeing a white flag this time by because there goes the clock now. 40 minutes is expired, it's done. Right, we're into overtime officially. This battle rages on. We'll get to that in a moment. I just want to clarify that Barney has got the white flag in hand. No, it's a check in. So he didn't show the white flag. Instead, he shows the checkered. Is that what I'm reading? Yeah. So is it looks that like right? The flags yes. don't show. Yeah. Oh, oh Jesus Here Christ. At, uh, um, what an absolute cluster. Uh, so there you have it, folks. So we're good on fuel. We're, we're good on everything. Jackson Rayhana for Summit Simsport back on top, back on the platforms of the GSRC and immediately back on top. That is good to see. He wins at Monza, the opening round of Super Formula Light. Have a look at the battles raging closer to the finish line in the in the uh, lower Ooh. half of the top 20. Oh, that is that is so perilously tight. Drag race, run to the line. You're oh, watching oh, Brett they Parker. Together, they are wheel banging. Brett Parker and David oh. Christensen and Richard King and Trent Allen. Oh, boy. So, Rayhana, Humphreys, Welch, and Robertson. One, two, three, and four. Ravis in for fifth. Baz was sixth. Dial, Culverwell, Mookie, Haynes, the top ten. Christensen, Barker, King, Allen, Leach, Chapman. Threw it away late in the piece. Got home in 16th. Then Simpson, Neil, Wood, Matson. No, Pete. Pete's running out of fuel. Pete is running out of fuel. Pete's limping to the line. We're riding with Matt Schmitke. Final spot in the top 20 on the line here with Eduardo Zamora immediately alongside him. Have a look at this. The run to the line. Schmitke edges out Zamora by a nose. And Matson is limping to the line. Chug-a-lugging on an empty tank. The smell of an oily rag, but he'll do enough to get to the line, I think. Surely. Come on, Pete. Surely. Last one home on the lead yeah. lap is Pete Mackin in 22nd. Well done. And then we go back 
to Michael Ladder, Greg Heaney, Paul Wilson, Wayne Vizza, Tim Watson uh, did get by the line. Spent two minutes in the pit lane at the end of lap 14, though. That's what brought him undone. Brett Bradbury, Mark McNamara, and then, oh, well, a long list of casualties. John Baldwin, Dale Jeffries, and then all the retirements. Jacob Vickery, Chris Stark, Ilya Mirabella, Kurt Nominson, Aiden Luthwaite, Fred Kahn, Liam Amos, and Liam Banks. 41 start, 33 get home, and... Updating you on Thursday Night Football just as you read through the results there, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Three-quarter time at uh, Marvel Stadium. The Western Bulldogs, 108, leading St Kilda 37. So that's the Dogs by 71 points at the moment. They led by 49 at the long break. The Melbourne Storm uh, and the Sydney Roosters were locked up at 12 last time I got a chance to look at the screen, but Melbourne have just crossed the... Uh, the try line to score their third of the night and it's 16 12 there are five minutes on the clock and they have a kick to make it a six point ball game and put, give them put themselves in the driver's seat we'll wait and see um here at monza extraordinary scenes wet practice wet qualifying um dry race the biggest loser in all of that was Aiden Luthwaite. He just plummeted in the early laps and never really recovered. Fred Kahn ended up upside down. There was carnage of plenty at the uh, first chain on both the first and second lap. Race control opted not, not to throw the caution. Then we had a fuel race towards the end uh, where with only two laps left in the, uh, in the race, as it turned out, the bloke that uh, joins us in central commentary as the race winner in round one of uh, Super Formula Lights had to actually go in for the smallest of top-ups. Jackson Rayhana, good evening to you. Uh, welcome back to the platforms of the GSRC. Firstly, mate, uh, well done on the win. But that looked like tough work. Yeah, thanks, Zach. Um, yeah, it's good to be back. Good to be in a summer team sports car again. And um, yeah, it's good to have a uh, an open wheelers platform in the uh, in the GSRC, um, yeah, we, you know, I guess I saw that, and Jamie, myself and Jamie saw that, and um, yeah, we were licking our lips, we're thinking, yeah, we definitely have to be the bus, and um, yeah, rolled the summit cars back out, and uh, yeah, it was cool, cool to get a result, definitely really good to get, get a result, and good to be back. Um, I'm I'm just having a look at some of the comments here, um, and nice to have you all on board, by the way. Dale Sharp's right, no white flag shown to the field, but the checkered flag, so. Uh, you know, Barney again slacking off like the lazy prick that he is. Um, and um, Sam Chapman, look, Chapo, your trouble there was an isolated incident, um, but I reckon the blokes that were involved in the five, six, seven car pileups on laps one and two might actually agree with you. Um, <laughs> now, um, uh, Jackson, well, you're right. Summit Sim Sports back on top. Um, Jamie Welch, uh, you know, took to it like a duck to water, as did you. Um, but you had your work cut out for you. There were a couple of guys there that, you know, kept you blokes honest in the early stages. But as they fell by the wayside, it opened up rather nicely for you, mate. Yeah, just a um, little bit of luck, um, keeping out of trouble and uh, qualifying. I think because qualif of the big field tonight, qualifying was important. Um, yeah, wet conditions definitely made it tricky uh, and interesting. Um, there were a couple of... Uh, couple of what I like to call ducks in the in the in the qualifying who were, were really quick and really uh, really tough to catch but um yeah just put yourself in a good position um three wide to turn one was confirmed confirmed not, was not fun <laughs> um but uh yeah no it was it was good it worked out in the end and um yeah definitely a few guys to look out for this this season um but uh yeah, yeah. We're, we're back and um, yeah, open wheelers is definitely for me. I, I had a crack at the supercars on Monday night, yeah. and um, yeah, yes. <laughs> it didn't go too well. So I'm like, yeah, look, maybe I should stick to what I know and stick to what I'm, you know, good at. And um, yeah, it's open wheelers, and and same can be said for Jamie, who's uh, going to join us in a second. 
Looking forward to uh, having uh, Mr. Welch in for a uh, chat. Um, uh, Kurt Nominson, straight from uh, from dinner, is also here to have a chat to us as well. Uh, looking forward to that as well. That's been a running joke tonight, Kurt, and you know why. Um, however, in saying all of that, um, should point out, there's a couple of things that I want to have a chat with you about, uh, Mr. Ray Hana. So just hang tight there for me. Can everybody at home, um, if Daniel's got it ready, have a look at the calendar for the season ahead um, for Super Formula Light? And this is what we've got to look forward to, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I, I don't have the full breakdown in front of me with regards to what rounds are sprints and what rounds are um, just standalone single race affairs, but there's the schedule. So a lot of Formula One Grand Prix circuits uh, featured on here. Um, uh, and, of course, a couple of IndyCar favourites as well, particularly around 7, 9 and 10. Um, uh, Jackson, looking at that schedule, um, knowing that they could throw the spanner in the works and throw rain at you at any given moment, talk me through it. Hungaro ring next, then on to Catalonia, then on to the newest circuit on the server and the Algarve International Circuit, Porto Mal, Portugal. Suzuka, Cota. Then on to the Glen, the full circuit at Watkins Glen in upstate New York. Then over to one of my all-time favourites in Formula B's there on the same night, Circuit Jill Villeneuve in Canada. Then on to Road America, which I reckon will be brilliant in these cars. Then on to the streets of Detroit. So, I mean, they've, they've probably given you the biggest challenge last with regards to the Concrete Canyon aspect of that. But what are your thoughts on that schedule ahead? Bring on Detroit. Man, we need more street circuits. Um, <laughs> I, I, I love these. A any formula car in a street circuit is just, oh, it's, it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, but yeah, look, definitely the the bulk, the, the meat of the calendar is um, definitely favours you if you're a, you're an up and coming junior in, uh, in Europe, trying to make your way through the formula ranks. <laughs> You'd be very familiar with a few of those tracks there, but um, yeah, no, it's it's an exciting calendar, and um, I think Hungara Ring is going to bring a completely different challenge to Monza. I think Monza's, you know, very very wide open, lots of drafting, lots of um, I guess try not to lose touch with the guy in front of you, and I guess, yeah, it's it's it races very very differently to Hungara Ring. Hungara Ring is going to be a very interesting challenge, especially if they're going to make it wet next week. Game over at the uh, Sydney Football Stadium. Melbourne have got the job done, 18 points to 12, even though they've still got a penalty to play and they're just going to take the tap and kick it in and such. So the Storm beat the Roosters on a Thursday night. My friend that uh, is a Roosters supporter at that game will be absolutely delighted with what's just unfolded. And I get to go to the Brisbane Roosters game with her up here at Suncorp in a couple of weeks' time. So I get to... Uh, rub that one a little bit uh, more when I see her in a couple of weeks. Um, the Storm looking pretty in uh, 2024, no doubt about that. Hey, um, uh, Jackson, the other thing that we should talk to you about is that um, uh, since we last spoke, the Tempest weather system's been, um, you know, the talk of the town in iRacing circles. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Um, what have you made of it? Um, and, and how are you uh, adapting to it now that you rock up in a server and you're not sure whether you're going to be you know racing in the dry racing in the rain um particularly tonight where it was really challenging for you blokes running practice and qualifying in wet conditions wet into you know uh, a, a slightly but surely uh drying uh circuit but still noticeably wet for qualifying and then obviously bone dry for the race um super challenging the temper system itself is incredibly impressive um like the the realism, um, we did a, a mountain men race in these things at Bathurst a few uh, weeks weeks ago, and um, I was flying home in the final stint, and I, I had a spin at the metal grate, and I went back and watched the replay, and um, every single lap leading up to that point, my my wheel, uh, my right, I think it was my right rear wheel, was either side of the white line, and the lap that I spun out, it was right on the white line, so in terms of realism they've, they've really got nailed I, I looked at that after i'm like you know what i'm not even mad that's that's actually really impressive in terms of realism but um you know like it, it provides it, it's completely changed the platform by racing like it, it's very uh you know it, it brings a new level of adaptability um and hopefully when they roll it out for more cars like gt3 obviously is a big one and uh, very popular um, with with the Tempest system, the IMSA series, uh, these cars. Uh, I've been doing a lot of wet weather driving in Formula 1600s, the Formula Fords as well. So um, 
Yeah, no, it, it's really, really good, and um, yeah, it's very impressive in terms of the, the realism aspect. Indeed it is. Um, and obviously uh, tonight, um, Monza ticked that box, move on, but the Hungaro are in a distinctly different circuit to this one. 100%. Um, again, I think qualifying is going to be, if it wasn't important tonight, it's going to be a whole lot more quali uh, important at, uh, at Hungara Rink. It's very, uh, very tricky track to pass. And um, yeah, it's going to provide a whole heap of challenges. Also, um, on the result, uh, yes, the NRL, um, I tipped the Storm by six, so it's a double win. Oh, well done. <laughs> well done. Um, I'm not in tipping competitions anymore. They drive me up the wall. Um, <laughs> but, but the, 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 I'm, I'm trying to lighten uh, the load of things that infuriate me, so tipping was the first thing that went. Um, but now, um, nicely done from you, mate. Hang there. If there's uh, time, we'll come back and uh, get a bit more intel from you in the meantime. I want to invite in your, uh, your teammate Jamie Welch and also Kurt Nymanson. Uh Kurt, how was dinner? Yeah, it was good. Good, definitely. <laughs> uh, the only word this is the views I needed to eat as I'm catching a plane at 2 o'clock tomorrow morning. Oh, jeez. Oh, well, right well, I've got to drive up there at 2 o'clock. But... <laughs> yeah, fair enough, too. Um, uh, well, in that case, then, uh, so that you can uh, go and get as much sleep as possible, we'll make this short, sharp, and sweet, mate. Um, I mean... Sure, you missed out on, on some good fun at Knock Hill, but um, talk me through the the challenges uh, associated with this because for for a while there it was looking good for you. You made win while the while the sun you made uh, rain while the sun shined essentially uh, uh, there in the opening stages. Uh, you made great inroads on the. Um, on the field, benefiting from the uh, incidents at turn one on both the opening two laps. After starting well down the order, you were basically mid-pack. Um, but then uh, it, it's gone pear-shaped. What happened? Talk us through it. Uh, yes, yeah, so I had a really, really good start. I don't know if you'd get that up, but uh, I, I think I passed about seven or eight cars by the time I hit T1. Uh, I just got stuck in the traffic jam. I got wing damage and further on through the stint all the ones that had pitted for fast repairs or didn't have damage just sort of drove past me in a straight line like I was standing still. And that then makes, it, put it, in that makes it difficult, doesn't it? So, yeah. talk us through the incident, putting it in the fence. To, was it a wheel on the dirt? Was it too hot into the corner? How'd that happen, please? I uh, just, just overdrove into the corner and ended up at white in the dirt. Put the, uh, I think it was a left rear wheel in the dirt and didn't have my fast repair left, so ended up uh yeah looping it round and putting it in the fence too much damage to finish the race it, it, it's hard when you've already built your fast repair in these uh in these cars um because they are nimble and they are fragile little things um hold hold the phone there one moment i'm just going to go back to to jackson momentarily aiden luthwaite he's pacing qualifying you must have been annoyed not to get the bonus point for pole Oh, and the, the fact it was last minute too, like, <laughs> I, I had a bingle um, very late in quality, and, and that's that's the whole of qualifying, half an hour session, it was on a drying track, so getting that last lap in and having the tyre temperature was really, really, really important, and um, <laughs> I just didn't get that last lap in, I didn't make it to the line in time, so... Um, well done, Aiden. Um, and he's, as I said, uh, there are a few ducks in these, uh, when it comes to these cars, and I think Aiden's definitely going to be one. To, uh, to look for when the heavens open. He's going to be very, very tough to beat. Uh, and I guess the um, the other thing as well, and I'll get comment from all three of you on this as well, um, is uh, you've got to be versatile in these conditions. And we saw tonight those guys that don't necessarily enjoy the, the rain but thrive in the dry, they they really enjoyed their uh, the 40-minute race there. They really were able to... Um, overturn any sort of deficit they may have suffered in qualifying mode yeah absolutely i think um yeah like it'll be interesting i think when we get a race or if we get a race that um you know starts dry or i, I think starts dry and finishes wet i think that's really really going to throw um a spanner in the works because it just brings it, it's it's tempest it, it brings a whole new yeah. level of strategy to to i racing that that wasn't really there before it's you know when do you get on wet yeah. when you know the best time when's the changeover you know convert like conversely going back to dry tires sort of thing 
um, yeah, it just brings a whole new level to to the sim, and it's it, it's made it. You know, it's brought <laughs> brought brought me out out of the blue. Um, it's brought yes. you know, a couple of a couple of guys back, I think. Um, and, and yeah, it's it's made it really really interesting, and and just added a whole new element. Indeed it has. Um, coming back to you soon, mate. Uh, sorry to keep you uh, waiting there, Kurt. Just going back to you. Um, obviously, tonight didn't go to plan, but talk to me about a few different things. Um, we're still in the novelty phase, getting used to the, to the Tempest weather system. Talk me through how you're enjoying that. Um, Talk me through uh, the the thoughts on obviously uh, going from uh, you know pelting down rain in qualifying and, and practice to a dry circuit in the race and how you handled that, um, and then also talk me through your thoughts on the calendar that we had up on the screen a few moments ago and what you might or might not be looking forward to. Then there's your incident on replay too, courtesy of Daniel Creer. So yeah, um, the the dry in track. Definitely like a big big difference from quality. I was struggling in quality. I haven't done enough laps in the wet in this car Mostly done the IMSA stuff in the wet. So that was that was definitely a challenge um, Changed up a lot of things, but it was it was a lot of fun being able to sort of drive through and pass people that I was slower than in qualifying to then be faster than on the drying track made for good racing uh, I think the only track I'm not looking forward to is Detroit. I've never really been good at Detroit, so that, that'll be one that um, I'm going to have to do a lot of practice for that week and try and do a lot of laps in the sim around there to try and get some pace in that. All right, very nicely done. Um, and, and I mean, obviously, as you say, tonight didn't go to plan, but what's your general impression and overview of these Super Formula cars, mate? I, I love doing the super formulas. I love doing the regular formula and the light. Both of these cars, a lot of fun to drive. I wish I could do more of them. I've just been uh, been a bit busy with work and playing in a few other things, but hopefully I can get some more pace up and race these boys at the front eventually. All right, and and, and what else is going to keep you busy throughout the course of the season, mate? Are you are you going to stick to the open wheeler stuff, or are you going to try your head at some tin top racing as well? I've uh, definitely been trying to do most of the GT3. I love running GT3. And I think the GT4, I was doing that this week, and I think I might try and do the season for both of those. Have a bit of fun doing all that sort of stuff. When you're not uh, getting on planes and taking off to God knows where. Um, and, <laughs> and the other thing as well, um, I guess when we when we talk about um, uh, what's ahead for this season. Um, it's important to note that the GT3s were here on Monday night as well, um, and Super Formula Light here on a Thursday night, but a tin top around here as opposed to an open wheeler, uh, you, you can't really prepare for tonight based on Monday night because they're two completely, distinctly different um, racecrafts, aren't they? Yeah, definitely a different driving style for GT3 versus uh, Super Formula Lights. Uh, you can be a lot more aggressive over the curves in the GT3 and it doesn't upset you as much as it does in these things. You definitely a lot less spins if you go aggr uh, go aggressive over the curves, so not a whole lot of preparation that I could have done with that, but I, think I got some laps in and that's all I've really been aiming for this season at the moment and hopefully that helps for next season as well. All right, mate. Hey, uh, very nicely done. We understand you've got an early start, so we'll let you uh, shoot on through so you can try and get some shut-eye. Um, well done on uh, making it onto the grid, uh, and those uh, those early laps were nice and impressive. I think I saw plus 20 next to your name at one point. Um, unfortunately, not to be, but uh, onwards and upwards. Good luck when we get to the Hungaro ring and for the rest of the season. Yeah, thank you. I'll uh, see you guys next week. It's going to be interesting as well, as we welcome in Jamie Welch, the, um, the differences in race formats here uh, too, ladies and gentlemen. A couple, of, um, uh, a couple of sprint rounds will spice things up just nicely, particularly with some invert racing um, as well. Uh, Jamie, welcome back. Nice to have you on board again, mate. Um, and nice to see that uh, Jackson had some at Sim support at the top of the tree as well. I mean, at the end of the day, Sure, you're a few seconds down the road. Um, sure, you also had to contend with um, uh, David Baz in the closing stages there as well. 
that was a great tussle. But how nice to be back on the platforms of the GSRC in a, in a, in a discipline of racing that suits you so well and straight back to the pointy end of the summit. Yeah, yeah, I've had a, I've done two races uh, straight in this week, and I've loved both of them. Actually, come to the pointy end on both of them, and I'm super, super happy with how my pace has been. It's um, it's a bit hard because I've I've changed my job and had a bit more work commitments these these days, and unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do full seasons anymore like I used to. I'm only going to be able to sort of pop in and pop out as I can. But it's uh, me and Jacks had a discussion a, a couple of days ago, and we said we're going to do it, so we jumped in. We we decided to have a bit of a summit sim. Sport revival and see how we went and uh we're really really stoked that we're uh, as quick as we are can i can i just highlight the uh the bleeding obvious point that nobody's made yet it's bloody rare to be here on a thursday night and not see the name m dench on the scoreboard um uh, at the top of it particularly <laughs> So I don't know whether Denchy fancies he's trying his hand at open wheelers or not at somewhere down the line, but it, is, it has been a long while because of his dominance in Porsches in this slot for so long on a Thursday night. But, um, yeah, we haven't got his name anywhere in the discussion until just now. Um, uh, Jamie, that's, a, that's I mean, it's good and bad. Uh, you know, work enables you to have a, a roof over your head, etc. and so forth. So there's benefits to having a busier work schedule, but it does make it difficult to, you know, mount a campaign and, and, and uh, put it together. But at least you're in a position where, uh, as a genuine contender, whenever you are here, um, you can shake things up and um, take it to the best of them, maybe not necessarily be a championship contender, but certainly make those appearances count and be someone that could shape the, uh, the makeup of the, the framework of the championship leaderboard at the end of the 10 weeks. Yeah, well, that's it. I'm, I'm going to at least put my put my name in there and sort of put it in the pointy end. Um, I'm not going to lie. I sort of I'm sort of kicking myself. I had the relative there to to go uh, top three in in qualifying, but I just couldn't put a lap together for the love and all money. So I was a bit annoying about that. So if I, maybe if I could have been a little bit closer and not dropped the toy, I may may have been a bit closer. I don't think I would have challenged for the win to be honest, but I think I definitely had the pace to at least keep with these boys. But um, yeah, unfortunately, I just got out of the the. the toe and just got a bit slow and that was it but i'm also uh trying vr as well so i'm like i've only done two races in vr so i'm sort of uh still learning that as well so i think i've still got a little bit of time left in me so hopefully soon i'll be uh up at the pointy end with jackson and we can really sort of push each other and have a bit of fun quick comment from the both of you um 41 cars out on the circuit for a qualifying session in uh, wet conditions on a drying, uh, well, with the rain having stopped, but the track still soaked. How was that? Was that um, hairy? Ouch. Carnage. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> all needs to be said. It's just chaos, carnage. It was. It was absolutely insane. I sort of, uh, I had a moment where I just sort of went, well, I'm going to go between these guys. If I die, I die. If I don't, I'm sweet. So <laughs> it's just sometimes you just have to take that line. You've got to commit to it and sort of just hold on and see how it plays out. So it's not, sometimes it's not the best thing, but sometimes you just got to do it and that's how you get the lap time down. Okay. Yep, fair point. Um, uh, very, very... Uh uh, honest and um, blunt assessment of the, the qualifying conditions there from uh, the Summit Sim Boys. Um, uh, Jamie, if I if I can pick your brain for a moment to get your thoughts on, even though you won't be here for every round, um, that calendar is a beauty. What do you like? What don't you like? Oh, I love all of it. I wish I could do every race. Um, the, good, <laughs> the, the great thing about it, though, is I'm here for my favourite track, Suzuka, so that's that's going to be good. I, I reckon uh, I should be able to give Jackson a bit of a, uh, a a bit of a push on that one, at least. Uh, can you um, um, <laughs> can okay, you well. um, put that in writing and send it to Jared Knight that Suzuka's your favourite circuit, please? Not he hates Suzuka, um, and he'll probably be tuning in at some point as well, and, and you'll hear that we've said that. Um, uh, I mean, uh, the other thing as well, uh, you blokes, um, not that it necessarily impacted you so much, Jackson, being at the pointy end of the summit, but um, for you, Jamie, as you were working your way through the field there, and particularly in that battle with David Baz towards the end, which was, you know, uh, holding our attention for, for much of the closing stages, um, the slipstream, uh, the uh, aerodynamic effect around here is quite extraordinary. 
Oh yeah, definitely. If you get out of the toe, you're, you're done basically. Then that's where I was sort of struggling. I made a couple of really stupid mistakes, especially in the turn one. Uh, Baz was really, really good into turn one, and I just kept making mistakes there. And um, that's where what that's what my undoing was. But unfortunately, I, I didn't actually see what happened. All I saw was in the wall at the pit entry, and I think he locked a rear brake if that was right. And I was I was devastated for the poor guy to be honest. That was he he, he was definitely just that little bit quicker, so he definitely deserved the place. But um, hey, mistakes happen and um, yeah, one of the best the first things you've got to do about racing is finish. So um, yeah, I, I wish him the best of luck in the future. But um, yeah, it's going to be a really good season and I think um, I think there's going to be a lot of really good battles throughout the entire season um, with, with me, without me. But yeah, I can't wait for it, to be honest. All right, very nicely done. Uh, oh, <laughs> David Bass. That'll do it. Um, was that as he was coming in for his second pit stop or was that his first? That was his second. Yeah, uh, it was... It just threw it away completely. What a, what a um, hat delivery on that car. Magnificent. Um, oh, dear. Uh, that might just about... Do, uh, the only other thing I can think of is um, the unknown uh, gentleman is the new circuit on the server, the Porto Mal circuit in Portugal, the Algarve International Circuit. Have you, have you had a chance to dabble in that yet? Um, I've never done a lap, personally, so that'll be interesting for me. <laughs> Yeah, I'm exactly the same. I've never done a lap either, so let's see how we go. It's like motorsports aren't into a roller coaster. It's fantastic. Um, now, um, I guess uh, one other thing. Um, uh, what are your thoughts, uh, Jamie, on the, the the race formats, mate? I mean, we're we're, we're familiar with the race formats for tin tops, um, uh, but I mean, obviously, it's being applied to Super Formula Lights this season. Um, those invert races uh, will provide no shortage of drama, excitement, and entertainment for those tuning in at home and those of us in the commentary box, but they'll be heart and mouth stuff for you drivers, no doubt. Oh, it was, I did, like I said, I did a GT4 race uh, uh, last night and it had the reverse top 10 and it was the most fun I've had in a long time. Like, it was really, really, really good. Um, but yeah, it, it was uh, one, of the, one, of the, one of the best races I've actually had for a long time in a tin top. So I, yeah, I, I can't wish we had more of it, to be honest. All right. Um, what, what else is going to keep you busy, uh, Jackson, with regards to um, your sim racing, mate? Obviously, we haven't seen much of you here in recent times. Are you going to try and do the supercars on a more regular basis, or are you tempted to give them the flick after Monday night at Winton? Um, and, and what are you doing outside of our GSRC servers, still flying the flag for Summit, no doubt? On the V8 topic, I'm... I had my lunch money stolen on Monday night, mate. I've like, <laughs> absolutely bullied around. So I think um, I think I'll leave the V8 to, uh, to to the guys who know uh, those cars a little bit better than me. But um, oh, look, in terms of the summit uh, stuff going on, um, enduros, uh, the GSRC enduro um, series. Uh, we've got summit. It's got two cars in there: one uh, prototype and one. Uh, GT entry, uh, which is which is really good. Um, their prototype entries doing all right. We've had a, a podium, a, a second, and a win. Uh, so uh, we're, we're doing all right in that series as well. Um, and we've got a couple, one or two fresh names uh, driving that car as well. While you know, obviously ja Jamie's got his work commitment, so he can't do every round. Um, and you know, obviously sometimes I've got my work commitments on a weekend, so I won't be able to be around. But um, you know, it's we've got we've got those, and yeah, m mostly officials. Uh, I've been doing a lot of yep, officials yep. lately, so uh, we, which is something I was never used to do. So I think they did me a, a lot of favours in, in this race tonight, because uh, obviously this week is is Monza, so um, definitely suited. Uh, suited me very well to uh, to spend the afternoon doing a couple of those and um, yeah no it's it, it's been fun it's been good to return especially with the the addition of the Tempest weather system absolutely all right gentlemen well done thank you appreciate that uh, nice to have you back on our uh, on our servers on our platforms and looking forward to more of the same throughout the course of the rest of the season go well have a good weekend thanks boss have a good night Cheers, mate thank you very much. <laughs> You've known me long enough, Jackson. Zach will be fine. Uh, but <laughs> Daniel Correa, <laughs> um, let's get some final thoughts from you, mate, because I'm still trying to catch my breath. That Super Formula race, that was um, exhilarating stuff. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, it started off 
Pretty chaotic, of course, as I expect I said it in, in the Formula Vs. It's Monza Turn 1, and we expected it to be wet, so that was the chaos in the dry. So you just imagine what would happen if there was actually standing water on the track. Um, but as, as it evolved, right. as, yeah, as, as the, uh, the race evolved, people started to get, you know, into their zones. There was battles all throughout the race. There was never a point of, of real lull. There were, there, were, there were battles at least um, towards the middle and the back ends. And then sometime when the pit uh, strategy started to resolve, um, yeah, we started to see some really good stuff up at the front. Uh, but I, I look, I just really like these cars. I just like formula cars. You know what I mean? It's kind of hard. You, you would have to yeah. have it. Oh, horrific race for me to find it boring you know what i mean um so yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I just think it's it's props all right i mean that being said not the uh not the most exhilarating form of the v we've ever seen uh tonight but certainly it had its moments as well and four races four different winners nice way to start thursday night motorsport for the new term um let's uh start to wrap this baby up ladies and gentlemen reminding you that the AFL has been run and won tonight by the Western Bulldogs over St Kilda and they've done so to the tune of 66 points 11 goals um, 19, 10, 124 well I say that but St Kilda have picked up a mark inside the 50 with uh, only 3 seconds on the clock so a kick after the siren you either make it 60 points or uh, 65 points the margin there in favour of the Western Bulldogs. Nonetheless, an emphatic smashing in favour of the boys from Footscray. Um, and, of course, Melbourne getting the better of the Sydney Roosters in the NRL, 18 points to 12. Um, here on the platforms of the Gentleman Sim Racing Club, we certainly couldn't do anything uh, like what we're trying to pull off this season, which is four nights of broadcast for 10 weeks in succession without the great support of people like Waste Options, Sprite Insider, Orbit Australia, Leipzig Racing, and Wave Australia, and also Flash Graphics. And looking ahead at what's coming your way throughout the course of the rest of week one and into week two as well, we want to remind you that um, Joe Baldwin and Nick Fodiatis will be here with you tomorrow night as we go um, stock car series racing in the Superstar Racing Experience cars. And uh, that is a three-race format there for you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, running similar format to Formula V, really, except instead of 10, 15, and 15, it's 15, 20, and 15. Uh, 8.45 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Join the boys for that. Send down International Raceway, the venue. Uh, a full reverse grid for race two, a top 10 invert for race three. And that is, therefore gone away with the progressive grid format um i like it i like what you're doing here daniel uh, uh, a nice uh, update of the old graphics department in the off season uh, in the break um not yet sure what they're doing with the mountain men on saturday night joe Ball will know that confirm that for our uh, regular mountain men participants um and that's saturday night 200 kilometers or near enough to it around the mount panorama circuit in the beautiful central western new south wales at bathurst and uh 8 30 p.m australian eastern standard time for that one monday night we're back with you we'll kick it off with super two and then move into gt3 super two and super three coming away from the chicago street circuit where they've got 48 again look out fair dinkum um they will need the safety car there probably twice uh 25 minutes the journey race starts 7 30 5 eastern standard time adam labus and i'll be with you for that one and then we head on to and believe it or not we're actually i believe we're doing the am split next week um not the pros because we've got three 90 minute races in this campaign but the the latter two are reserved for um the pro boys so am split monday night um waste options gt3 from the circuit de la Sarf, the 24 hours of lamar course the home of the french classic and uh we'll be getting that one underway at 8:30 eastern standard time tuesday night the only week night we're not on broadcast at the moment the lives are racing up and comers yet to be confirmed where they're going and what they're racing um but uh, 10 minutes 15 minutes and 25 minutes the race lengths there full reverse grid for the second race getting underway 7:45 eastern standard time then a race that Nick Fodiatis will be avoiding like the plague as the GT1 Civil War with thanks to Orbit Australia heads to the Sebring International Raceway in Sebring, Florida. And they'll be on track for 35 minutes getting underway 9.15pm Eastern Standard Time. Wednesday night, 
Banksy and uh, Daniel Correa Sale will be with you. First up, the production car challenge as they take the TCRs to Knock Hill. How good is TCR going at the moment? The racing at Phillip Island the weekend was top shelf. Knock Hill International, race one, 15 minutes, race two, 25, top 10 invert, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, overtaking there. Not the easiest thing to achieve, as you saw in form of the week tonight. So that will be a particularly challenging second race for them on Wednesday night. Um, and then, of course, we uh, lead from there into the main course of Wednesday Night Motorsport, which will be the GT4 Challenge. They're off to the Auto Dromo Enzo Edino Ferrari, better known as Imola, and that'll be a 40-minute race there. 8.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the second round of the GT4 Challenge in Term 2 of 2024. Now, make a note of this. Um, I'm not here next Thursday night. <laughs> I've been, I'm, I'm, I'm off to Wagga for some karting next weekend. Um, and I've made the agreement that I'll go and hang out with some friends in Wagga, uh, in Wollongong rather, on the way down. And that, therefore, um, because it's Anzac Day, um, two up will be played and then dinner will be eaten and uh, a fair bit of alcohol will be consumed along the way, I would imagine. Um, so I'm not with you next Thursday night, but join the boys for a special Anzac Day edition of Thursday Night Motorsport. For Sprite and Cider, uh, the Formula V Circus off to Ostra Slobbert in Germany. Uh, the opening uh, race will be 10 minutes, the second will be 15 with a full reverse grid, the third will be 15 with a top 10 invert of the results of race two. That's getting underway, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. Then on to the Hungaro ring for Sprite and Cider Thursday Night Motorsports main course or dessert, whichever we want to call it as we bring you super formula lights from the hungaro ring at 8 45 p.m eastern standard time making a note of that of course uh, the times are eastern standard time for the next uh, two terms of competition and of course uh, the start times are slightly earlier in the evening than they had been because there's now only two hours separating the east and west coast uh, or difference, I should say, between the East and West Coast as opposed to the three of the progressive and civilised daylight saving um, period. GSRC merch.myshopify.com or merch.tgsrci.com if you want to get your hands on some magnificent merchandise that uh, John Simpson and the crew have put together for us. Um, and uh, not too late to get involved on that. Um, you might have a birthday coming up for somebody. You need to buy them a gift, a stubby holder, a you know, bottle opener, a T-shirt or hoodie. Anything will do the trick. Um, maybe even get Mum a GSRC merch for Mother's Day. Who knows? Um, uh, uh, maybe a shirt or a hoodie for Mum uh, ahead of the cold winter months. GSRC merch. .com. And the only other bit of housekeeping we've got for you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, well, there's two things that I want to end with, but um, number one is... The Endurance Championship continues on Mother's Day, actually. There'll be a few of you in the doghouse for this one, no doubt. Um, because, because instead of going for Mother's Day lunch, oh, Mum, can we make it dinner? Um, so the GSRC Endurance Championship continues round two of the campaign, um, Sunday the 12th of May. Four hours the journey. And WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca the venue so sink your teeth into that on may 12 12 p.m eastern standard time race start the boys will be on air with you just moments before that i'm sure um so that's it from us we are done um been a good night been a good week um a, a lively week of competition to get us underway field sizes have been pretty good across the board and there's nine more weeks where that came from for us on Thursday Night Motorsport starting on Anzac Day. Um, I'll be back with you the week after. Of course, don't forget to join Joe and Nick tomorrow night as well. But we end again um, by wishing the very best to everybody in Sydney and Western Sydney at the moment after the awful events that have unfolded there throughout the course of the week just gone um, and wishing uh, every, anyone uh, that may be attending be it in person or virtually um, Brendan Van Ryn's funeral tomorrow all the very best our thoughts are very much with you particularly his family his friends and his teammates in what's been a very sad and difficult time as we've mourned the loss of one of our own club members so with that we say rest in peace brendan we say good night to you ladies and gentlemen hope you've enjoyed week one of sprite inside a thursday night motorsport for the new term and uh, hope you'll join 
Cho and Nick to bring the curtain down on the opening week of 10 tomorrow night from 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. In the meantime, on behalf of Daniel Correa and all the crew here, where Jackson Lehana got the job done at Monza in the opening round of Super Formula Lights, I'm Zach Caven saying have a great weekend, everybody. Get out and support the uh, Karting Nationals in Victoria. There's a state round here in Queensland for the Circuit Racing Championships. And there's a smorgasbord of real-world motorsport to sink your teeth into on the telly as well. So it's a good weekend if you like uh, racing of the motor variety and whether you like it on two or four wheels. I look forward to your company Monday night, but the action continues tomorrow. Until then, on behalf of all the crew here, have a great evening, everybody. Bye for now.